God. We're doing absolutely great. We're, we're breaking nails. We're talking about <laughs> the, the dead soldiers that ends up on the table right at the beginning. I mean, because it's the glass I'm going to behold. There's no getting around it. God damn it. I mean, if you hadn't pointed it out, I don't know if the audience would be observant enough to be like, oh, she's missing a nail. Forgot to bring the glue, too. Oh, well. Okay, just... Uh, 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 I, I don't know. I don't put on fake nails very often. I don't oh, it, it's, yeah, it's just brushing, like, just throw you on there for another half hour. Just, just get through today. God damn it. Just through th- today. Please. I, I, I have an interview. I have to make it through. I, uh, to be honest, I mean, I'm glad it's this and not like a hand job. That would be worse. Yeah. But for that, I wouldn't have forgot glue. So. I mean, especially if with a handy, if it goes like flying off, like, bing. There's, there's like the lube too can like get under them if they're even like half if they're already like kind of hanging on by a thread the lube gets under it and then forget it they're done. <laughs> the things you learn, right? The things you learn in this industry. Is it the water based or the silicone based that's worse for the nails? Silicone. Okay. Yeah. See, fucking silicone eats everything. It does. It does. It's not good. You can't use it on certain toys. It eats nails. Well, it's vaginas don't like it as much. How how the hell do they still sell the shit? Because it's quite slippery. It's good for butts. It's mm. good for the butt stuff. That's why. Fair. Yeah. Fair. And everyone needs some butt stuff in their life. Everybody needs help with butt stuff. Everybody needs lube. It's true. So for my one partner who's just like ramming in, I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, that's. Mm. She was a very heavy bottom. She just it was what she was into. So. God bless her, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm 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 mm. I, I hope her current fiance is very happy with. Her. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Right? Nothing like the next dude, the dude she ends up marrying, like, hey, that dude kind of looks like me. He's kind of a heavier set dude with a beard. All right. You have a type. You have a type. <laughs> this explains why you were momentarily willing to move cross country for me, which freaked me out. Oh, <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big, big commitment. Yeah. But enough about my mishaps. <laughs> Social media would lead me to believe you had one of your own in the last 24 hours. <laughs> yeah. Are we recording? Oh, yeah. Oh, we've been recording. Oh, I was like waiting for a cheers and everything. Oh, no, we'll get to that. Like, it's oh, natural. Oh, cheers. Shit, cheers. Okay. Oh, yeah. We The minute I clapped, we started recording. Oh, gotcha. My bad. You learned the secret of the sauce. That's why I don't do intros and shit like that. Smart. So it's natural. Yeah. That's, no, it's smart. That makes sense. It's the only good takeaway I've ever gotten from listening to Chris Hardwick, so. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, I got cockblocked by my own industry. Um, one of the very few guys who is on the list of, yes, it's okay to fuck them off camera just for fun. Um, and that's a very recent development in my marriage. He also crews on adult sets sometimes. And tonight was, was going to be tonight. And uh, afterwards, I was going to go over to his place, but uh, no, they added an extra day to production, and it was like the only day he's going to be available before I leave, so I'm not getting laid tonight because of porn. The irony. That's bullshit. I know. Why is he not just being like, okay, I'm going to get off work and take care of you? Because if knowing a porn set, he'll be there until 2 in the morning. Who the fuck's the director keeping them there until 2 a.m.? Oh, our industry is notoriously disorganized. Well, I, I'm well aware I PA on occasion, so. Yeah, yeah. But 2 a.m. is still a I little ridiculous. It, it was apparently 4 a.m. on Friday. He wasn't there for that, but he said it was 4 a.m. on Friday, at least for crew, not like talent, but still. So my guess is no, he's not going to be getting out. If he gets out at 10 tonight, he'll be lucky. See, that's that's the kind of director like, yeah, my day rate's not worth it. Mm-hmm. I had a couple directors I worked for where it was like, oh, this day rate would be reasonable if it was an eight-hour day. Yeah. But there was definitely one feature I worked on where it's, I was the first one there. I was the last one gone. It ended up being like a 16-hour day. And like, oh, my day rate came out to under minimum wage. Yeah. I don't want to be on a porn set that badly. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just, I, I think other than that, they're, they're whoever they they must be. I can't say who it is. Obviously. Yeah, no, no. We don't want to call them out. Even. No. I'm, I, the, we, all, we both want to work occasionally. Exactly. Oh, this, not like this company's ever going to hire me, but whatever. Um, it, it, I think other than that, it's go, it goes well. He's like, they pretty much, you know, I'm just kind of getting paid to sit around for most of the day. So he's like, I can't really complain. Oh, no, you can. It's you, your time. Also, you're not fucking me now. Exactly. Like, oh, hey, I'm missing out on. 
He went, he went and got a test on Tuesday and everything, too. Fresh test. Oh, so this is now costing him money to work. Mm-hmm. I'm very sad. It is costing money to work. It's like, this is cross-country sex. This mm-hmm. is not like you're going to be a... I know. And we haven't fucked... We fucked for the first time in October. And it's that that was it. It was the one time. And I was like... I was out here for six weeks in April. We tried again. Schedules clashed. And so it was, this time was looking good. <sighs> Maybe he should just call in sick. Mm. He's already on there, so he's already on set. So. Well, now, but yeah, I know, I know. What are you gonna do? I guess calling a bomb threat. <laughs> it's really looking forward to that boyfriend, Dick. I mean, oh, you wow. literally could just you know where they were they're, they're filming. You could just call in a bomb threat. <laughs> Actually, I don't know where they are, but you could find out. I have I have other boyfriend, Dick, that I'm going to uh, fuck buddy number two happens to be in town, so I'm going to see him. Tomorrow night. Okay. Okay. As long as you're being taken care of. Like, There's some consolation. Yeah. This this just particular, this particular, particular one who I'm cock blocked from gives a really good head and I was really looking forward to it. Oh, that is the absolute worst. Like high expectations and just. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It happens. It does, but I don't know. Next time, if it comes up again, if, next time you're in town, and if it happens, I know, I know, I'm going to be like, bro, we got to figure something out. <laughs> no, just okay. be like, bro, I'm going to call OSHA because I know you guys aren't using condoms. <laughs> oh no, oh, that would be such a bitch move. No, I can't, I can't. I'm not that petty. I can't do that. I mean, it depends on how long he makes you wait, right? Yeah, uh, we'll see. If you're watching this, you're pushing it. Right? You may get your production fined $60,000 because you're not putting out. Oh, can you imagine? It'd be hilarious. No, I would probably never work again if they found out. If they found out. No, I, would, I couldn't do that. I don't, I'm too nice. I can't help. My, I can't help. I don't, this is farcical. We're being silly. We are being cheeky, obviously. I would obviously. never. Obviously, we would never cause any productions. We like $60,000. Maybe one I just, nah, kidding, hire me. <laughs> yeah no you fire me on jo- no no kidding once again kidding kidding i would never I, would, <laughs> I still have to survive around here exactly like. <laughs> we all gotta we all gotta make a living yeah yeah you were to do that for real life it's like that is a death sentence in yeah the exactly exactly you could be a sex criminal and still get hired before you got hired again after doing that something like that forget yeah. it no and that would be super cunty just for everybody involved so many people would lose work and that would be horrible, right? In addition to, I want mean, to, I want to get digged down, but I, you know, there's, there are other ways. <laughs> there are, there are. It's just, you know, it's that behind the behind closed doors, off camera sex. It just hits different. Well, yeah, it just hits different. It should. Yeah. Porn, like, it's and a, porn sex is fun. Don't get me wrong. I love my job. I fucking love my work. But it's nice to like, you know what it is? It's like in the beginning. I would always be like, why are girls going to risk, like, fucking, you know, civilians? I hate that term, but, you know, non-industry, that's what we call them. Fucking civilians, like, they might not even be good at it. And what if they, you know, they're just fucking around bareback with other people? And, and like, why would you risk it? Just get pro dick. And then I was like, oh, now I see why. Yeah. The the porn guys, like, this is this is their job. This is what they're doing day in and day out. So it's not... They don't always make you feel sexy, you know? For sure. And, you know, no offense to any males out there, porn dicks also attached to porn dudes. Yeah. There are exceptions to the rule, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I have some friends that are male talent, but... They, yeah, 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 yeah. There, there's some reputations. Yeah. Yeah, there's reputations, for sure. But yeah, it's like, you know, this is like what they do. This is just work. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, oh, I have, you know my toenails aren't perfectly painted or like I have a mosquito bite on my knee or something. I I go into trade shoots or like page shoots, like caring about that. Whereas if it's just like a civilian guy, they're like, Oh, I'm just happy to be here, man. You know, like they put me in coach. Exactly. I'm in the game. Yeah. Like, they took me off the fucking bench. They don't care if I have an ingrown. They're like, you're just really good at sucking dick. I'm like, thank you. I agree. Right? Everyone's happy. Mm-hmm. You don't have to open up for a camera. Yep. You don't have to worry about tucking in your stomach and arching your back. No, you get to just get laid. Right. You don't have to make noises that may not be real. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God, folks. Porn sex isn't real, as we've discussed probably a hundred times. Like, every other episode that probably comes up, like, porn sex isn't real. No, it's called adult entertainment for a reason. Yeah. 
watching us and being like, I'll take notes on that would be like asking your kid to go watch The Fast and the Furious and be like, here's your driver's license. Like, that's not how it works. It's no one fucks in our reverse cowgirl for fun. I don't know a single woman who enjoys doing the like the squatting, basically, like, you know, legs spread in heels. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Nobody does that for fun. It only looks good on camera. Right. You know, it's like, oh, hey, penetration tits, O face. Exactly. That's I, that's that. I mean, I definitely know some people that do reverse cowgirl, but not like. No, like why? not like that. Like, yeah. but you not like knees straddling where you're comfortable and you're just grinding. That's different that we don't do that. No, no. Why would you? It doesn't look good on camera. And everything has to be aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. This is why when I first got into the industry, you know, civilian, we're just going to go with civilian because it's just the parlance of our times. I, it's a weird one. We are, I'm just used to it now. But I'd have civilian friends be like, yo, you know, why don't you want to be talented? I'm like, because A, I like choosing who I fuck. I often make really poor choices, but I like choosing. Mm -hmm. And B, you're just a prop as a dude. Oh, yeah. You're just a meat stick. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's like there are com a couple companies now that are doing the more, you know, like male focused for the uh, the female viewers, like see him fuck or like eye on the guy. But those are exceptions. Yeah. Those yeah. are exceptions. And when I got in 10 years ago, those were definitely not a thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, you were just a prop. You were just there to make the talent look good. And that's honestly, in most cases, how it should be. I mean, that's what the customers are paying for. They're paying to see usually the female. So it just yeah. is what it is. So you get the occasional dude who, because I've heard from other male talent, like that get upset about like how your load looks and shit like that. Oh yeah. Yeah. There are some guys who like refuse to start a scene soft and get hard. Everybody, they, there's, there's a lot of egos in porn, man. Everybody's got their thing. It's, it's cool. It is what it is. If you have to exist out in society with everyone viewing what for most people is an intimate moment. Mm-hmm. I, I understand. You want to look your best, yeah. of course. Yeah, for sure. I don't. I I kind of wish we would have more of appreciation for the soft dick, though. I'm a big fan of like just seeing a very attractive body with a soft dick, because then it's like then the dick isn't the focus. You know, I get like for a scene, obviously it wouldn't work, but like for photographs, I'm like a really nice, tasteful, like just full nude with a soft dick is very pretty. I think. I mean, they didn't give Michelangelo a giant heart on exactly because then that's just it's distracting. Yeah, I don't know. Guys, be more be more comfortable with your soft dick. It's fine. Well, and I'm with an actual intimate partner, sure. My yeah. dick could be soft. I'm not running away like, oh, shit, I'm flaccid. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there are, there are some guys who'll be like, I refuse to be soft on camera. I'm like, all right. I just, me thinks the lady doth protest too much. I don't know what you're, like, just chill. It's a, we're, you're going to get hard and we're going to see how big it is, but. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> We've all had those days where like, come on, dude. Yeah. Please, dude. Please. please. Yeah, please, dude. On set, I get it. I totally get it. There's so much pressure. I do not envy all that. If women had to actually be wet to shoot porn, I don't think porn would ever get shot. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. It'd be bad. It'd be bad. Hell, the amount of co-stars that people have to shoot with, they're like, I'm not necessarily attracted to this dude. Yeah. Yeah, I have, I have what I call, like, the two no lists. Like, the no, not for any amount of money whatsoever. And then there's the no, like, I'm not going to go out of my way to seek them out to shoot trade content. But if I get booked with them on set, I'll suck it up. But am I thrilled about it? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a job. Right. It's work. Yeah. Okay. This is who the director wants to see me with. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Or like, a, you know, a replacement or something. It's like, it, this, is, this is why it's a job. You know, and this is why not everyone can do it. People are, oh, you just took dick for me. You just... You just lay in your back and record and put it on the internet. I'm like, yeah, you could do it. Could you make money doing it? Probably not. Oh, and that that would be even worse. Like, could you imagine like launching an OnlyFans site and like doing boy girl scenes and just nobody watching? That that sounds worse. It does, it does but the, you know, for the people who are always like, oh yeah, you know, you know, you can't actually. It's not a real job. You don't make. I'm like. You you try it for a, and we'll see how it works out for you. We'll see if you can make a you know a decent living doing it. It's very much a real job. Hell, it's work, man. It's work, and it's 
almost 24 seven in some respects. Oh. So when you add in the social media. Oh my God, dude, I hate it. I hate the social media aspect of it. So everybody's like, oh, it's so toxic. I'm like, I know, but it is a necessary evil, especially when I'm in LA. Like I am scrolling Twitter, checking to see if anybody's like, hey, somebody flaked. I'm like, I'll be, I'm available. Right. But- I'm here. I, I, I'll suck that dick. Yeah, money, exactly. money. Exactly. I, but, or, you know, even just like con- being connected to fans, like some guys will get, they get real buttered if you don't respond to a tweet or like a tweet fast enough and stuff. So yeah, the, just the social media aspect of it is like, you're pretty much on call. Yeah. Unless it's, you know, you just like nothing today. Like you almost have to announce like, okay, I'm going to be away for a day or two. Like, just please leave me alone. It's got to be a thing. Which is ridiculous. Like, just because your load is an intimate moment to you doesn't mean that the content creator is having an intimate moment with you. Like, mm-hmm. we are at different levels, bro. Well, that's the that's the part of, like, the, you know, the dehumanization of it is, like, people don't see us as people with lives and families and goals and things. It's like, aren't you not just sitting around in lingerie with your makeup done 24-7 waiting for uh, some sex or, like, a dirty text? No, I'm not. I do things. <laughs> for people that are consuming this via audio, no one is in lingerie right now. No. Well, I might be wearing something a little skimpy. No, no, I, maybe. <laughs> I'm, depends on how much I drink. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have a reveal or not. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not wearing a cute bra. I can't. Th- this is like a see-through shirt for people who are listening. So it's got to be like the nude, flesh-colored, ugly bra. It's not. It's We're not always like, you know, on. Right, because holy fuck, it's a job. Mm-hmm. If you're a fucking dentist, you're not in people's mouths all the fucking time. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we're, we're, I was going to say we're making strides as a society, but uh, I feel like if for every step forward, we take two steps back. We're, it's getting there. I don't know. Is it though? Is it? The, the whole OnlyFans thing was pretty interesting, watching that response, the, you know, when they tried to kick us off the first time, and they're going to do it again. They're already doing it. But just the way the media, I don't think they were anticipating the media covering it the way they did. And now it's like a household name. And I'm sure a lot of that was thanks in part due to COVID and lockdown and people being like, I need to make money somehow. So there's like slightly less stigma about it, I guess now. But it's, we still have, yeah, we have a way of a long way to go. You definitely do. I mean, and there are definitely people that are very successful that are not including their faces in their fucking content. Mm-hmm. They're usually the exception, though. If you look at the hub, there are some t- people that are towards the top of the list that are, just, you know, they're a torso. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it sucks that they exist in a world where, like, they have to fear repercussions for showing their fucking face, even though they're doing porn. Mm-hmm. No, God forbid. I mean, you know, it's a choice you have to make. And that's why it's don't go into it lightly. You know, people are definitely like that's like, the negative about the whole OnlyFans thing being a household name now. People are like, oh, I'll do one. I'm like, honey, wait wait like think about it think about it because the minute you do that first scene and it goes up on the internet like you're you've got the scarlet letter for life now you know that is a choice and it will follow you until you die right it's not a protected class either no so 100 percent of future employer be like yo you got an only fans later mm-hmm. is it right no of course it's horrible but it is kind of it is what it is so like you have to be prepared going into that like it is a choice it is reality sadly and yeah. I have had female friends over the years be like, I'm thinking about, you know, trying to get into the industry. I'm like, okay, t- take a step back real quick. Mm-hmm. This is not 1990s vivid money, yes, first and foremost. Exactly. The juice is not necessarily worth the squeeze. You mm-hmm. are not, even in the 90s, Jenna Jameson was the exception to the rule. Yep. Not, there are plenty of people who were barely eking out a living. Yes, exactly. And it's even more so now because you got to compete with, a lot of people on OnlyFans. It's a very oversaturated market now. Yeah. Like influencers and, you know, like bikini models or fitness instructors who were like maybe having a slow go of it during COVID decided to make an OnlyFans. And pe- those are the people making millions of dollars because they already had like 1.1 million followers on Instagram going into it. You know, so it's 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 hard to fucking stand out. There's just so many people. There's so much content. Hell, the UFC ring girls have all have OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. Like, how are you going to compete with someone who gets broadcast to a couple hundred thousand, if not million people, at least once a month? Yeah, I know. It's funny people think like, oh, you're making porn, you're like rolling in it, right? You're just like making so much bank. 
Like when I always retort with, well, you watch porn, right? Like, yeah, of course. I'm like, when was the last time you paid for it? Ah, never. Interesting. So why do you think I'm making bank? All that ad support, right? Oh, God. It's that, it's like a wild disconnect. Like, yes, are there certain girl, like, performers making money? Yeah. They're the exception. Yeah. It's just like mainstream acting. Exactly. There are people fucking doing playhouses, and then there are people that are on Hollywood blockbusters. Yeah. They're both actors. Yes, exactly. It is a very broad spectrum. Yeah. I'm doing okay. I, like, student loans have been paid off, which is great, but still have, like, you know, I'm still, like, I worry about money, you know? I would like to, I don't want to be, like, a millionaire. I would just like to get to a point where I'm not constantly worried about it. That might be nice. We'll see. But it's, and you have to have, like, 10 hustles. You know, you can't just do, like, one site. You have to have, like, you have to have an OnlyFans and a many vids and a Clips for Sale and a Sex Panther and a cam site and... Right, and you have to be constantly paying attention to all of them. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. And I know, like, people, I don't do Snapchat. I did have a premium Snapchat for a hot minute, but I just hated it. I just had, no, it just, I just did not vibe with the platform. It just wasn't for me. And people are like, you're leaving money on the table. I'm like, maybe. Until Snapchat possibly bans you for something. Not even that. It's just like, I have to, it's it, like you said, is the juice worth the squeeze? And for me, it just wasn't. It was just way too much work mentally and emotionally that was just not giving me enough of a return that I'm like, I I, I got to kind of pick and choose where I'm focusing my energy. Yeah, you want to get into podcasting. Why? I know. <laughs> Welcome to like the land of even harder discoverability. Oh, I, I know. No, I, I am really excited about ours. Only like, yeah, my husband wanted to do one with the two of us at, at one point, And I was like, I love the idea of that, babe, but it is so much work. And we're just going to be like in this sea of very saturated content. The one that I'm working on, I feel like it's got it's got good potential because we all have ties to the horror community. So it's not just three randos talking about horror movies that they like. It's like people with connections and stories. And um, I'm excited. It is it's so much fucking work. Though. Oh, my God. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so much work. My phone was blowing up today as I was getting ready for this, actually, like, trying to figure out. Because, you know, we have to work around. We normally film on Tuesdays, and I'm out of town for two Tuesdays. So we have to work things around that. And I feel bad and trying to figure out when we're going to edit. And, oh, yeah. But it's fun, though. It is It is really fun. I wouldn't have said yes to it if I wasn't really excited for it and believed in it. No one should be getting into podcasting unless it's for the love of the game. Exactly. Exactly. It's not like the thing where you're like, oh, I'm do a podcast and make money. No, this is a, it's a passion project. 100% though, I get clients who very much think that they're going to be fucking Joe Rogan. And it's wild that people still, I'm like, do you have any idea how saturated the market is? Oh, I tried to tell them. And then we do three or four of them. And then I'm still, I occasionally get clients who are like, oh, you know, how we do a profit share? I'm like, no, I, <laughs> I get my rates. Yeah. Because you're going to make no money. Yeah. There, there is a like 0.0001% chance that you are going to make money soon. Mm -hmm. And it's still not going to be enough to cover my rate. Right. So my rate is this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're kind of hoping that like maybe if the first season does well, we can justify like renting a studio for the next the next couple seasons or two like that would that would be great we'll see because right now it's just in the second bedroom in my apartment and it is cramped <laughs> it's okay that's how a lot of successful podcasts started yeah hell speaking of rogan started on his fucking couch that's true yeah that is true no matter what people think of joe rogan and his content these days people have to acknowledge it is a successful show oh yeah for sure no, he made a successful podcast absolutely the amount of people who are like, you say JRE and their eyes just roll. It's like. I, he, he's a success. Exactly. I'm, no, no, no. I'm, I will, that, I will give him that. Yeah. And I'm not trying to demonize or fucking some of his content. I enjoy with other comedians. A lot of his other stuff. It's like. <laughs> yeah. Same. I'm like a couple, there's some stuff where I'm like, cool. And other stuff where I'm like, I'm going to just walk away. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to skip this episode and. uh let me know when he's getting back to being silly with other comedians. Yeah. Yeah. But people want to be like, oh, just 
No, you have to acknowledge it's a successful yeah, show. Yeah, no, it's just, he, there's no denying that. He did well for himself. Absolutely. He did well for himself after being on air for like eight fucking years and with all his fucking fame is exactly. what I like to point out to fucking. Yeah, he didn't start from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, another. I'm like, no, no, he had a big, big like advantage going in. Yeah. Yeah. Time, so, money, resources, and all, still took years. And already a household name. Like, yeah, yeah. it's still. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. It, we're in a very interesting time where it's like everybody can make content. And so things that necess- might not necessarily have been getting eyes on them before are, but then there's the other side of the coin where it's like, there's just so much content to filter through. Well, and that's the double-edged sword that I love, love and hate about podcasting. I love that there is almost no barrier of entry to get into this. Yeah. And I love the fact that Apple, which is really where podcasts are home, mm-hmm. does not give a fuck what you do here as long as you do not promote hate speech. Right, right. In an ideal world, YouTube would be like that. Mm. In an ideal world, but it's not. It's not, yeah. I, oh my God, got demonetized for saying F you. So stupid. Oh, hey, can it have you know actual creative freedom because they have to worry about monetization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, but like you said, it's the... The market is much more accessible, but because of that, obviously, yeah, now there's more stuff. It's people who maybe shouldn't be doing things creatively are doing things creatively, but I don't know. I think it is pretty, it's a pretty interesting time as far as just sort of for creatives. Oh, I think it's honestly the best time because, hell, as simple as my setup is, even 10 years ago, this wouldn't be doable. Right, right. Yeah, it's like, oh, hey. Cameras that can record a two-hour show. Just just that one little detail. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or a decent mixing board and would just be astronomical cost for the return on mm-hmm. a starting a podcast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just the equipment. You wouldn't, you'd have to do like 10 seasons to try and make it back if you were lucky. Yeah, exactly. If you were, you may never recoup. Mm-hmm. And now at the end of the day, yes, there's a couple thousand dollars worth of gear here, but this is also the evolution of my gear over right. six years of doing the show. Right. right. There was much cheaper gear day one. Yeah. That's like pe- fans will ask all the time, like, why don't you do this cosplay? You do, you know, I really enjoy cosplay. It's one of my favorite things to do. I'm like, why don't you do this one? Why don't you do Black Widow? Why, I'm like, do you want to, do you want to fund it? Because cosplay ain't cheap. Fuck no, it's not. Especially if you do it right. It's not cheap. And also I just, I'm running out of room to store things. I live in New York. Like, it, there's not a plethora of space to safely store cosplay so that it will live a long life. Cosplay or podcasting? You got one of the two choices for your extra space at the moment. Right. Yeah. And they're both in the same space. Oof. Literally. It's like my cam room, my crafting stuff, and the podcast. It is, it's the creative room. Yeah. It is crowded. <laughs> <laughs> As that one thing gets more successful, the other ones may get pushed more to the corner. A little bit, a little bit. I mean, the, the craft stuff is very organized. Like, all the cosplay stuff is very organized. So it's, you know, like, thread and um, scrapbooking or sequins. Thing. That That's all. It's very organized. But then the cam stuff is just kind of in a pile in the corner until I get back to it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just... Fuck, man, I'm lucky to even have a two-bedroom, though, so. Right? In New York? I know. Hell, you're lucky to have one a one-bedroom. Fancy. My other friends that live in New York, it's like, oh, they technically have a three-bedroom, but the rooms are so small, like, the door hits the bed as you mm-hmm. walk in. Mm-hmm. Now, the, I love my apartment. Oh, my God. I really do. We've been there for, I think, like, five years, and we're hoping that it'll be, like, our last apartment before we eventually move to the burbs because I want a house really bad. We really want a home. I, I know if people are like, why? I just, I do, we want like an old Victorian home that we can fix up and do things with. And that's just, we want space. We want to be able to have dogs and, you know, so um, just holding out hope that we got bought by a management company during COVID. Yeah. That's always, that's always a nightmare. Yeah. I'm a little nervous about what they're going to jack their rates up to, but we've got a year to think about it. So I'm It's trying. not rent controlled? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh, that's... I th- there is like a maximum to what they can raise it, but if they choose to do the maximum, it will put us just, it, it just, it's not feasible. So we're hoping they do somewhere in the middle 
if at all. Well, it's time to go down to your neighbor's apartment, start d- dumping roaches out so they move out. <laughs> and there's just empty units like, yo, look at all these empty units. Do you really want us to move out too? Oh, I wish. Oh, if only it was that simple. I mean, it is with a little creativity. I, I like our neighbors, though. I don't want to do that to them. <laughs> dog eat dog world sometimes. I know, I know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, when- do you want to end up in fucking Newark, though? Oh, there is. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Whenever I look for flights, I'm like, oh, it's oh, it's because it's flying into Newark. That's why. For, sorry, for those of you who are not on the East Coast, Newark is in Jersey. And as much as Jersey is sort of the redheaded stepchild of New York, Newark is oof. I don't know. What do you even call what do you even what's what's a good metaphor for Newark? Sorry, Newark, but it's true. You know it's true. Yeah. The only reason you have a city is because there's an airport there. It's, 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 it's not cute. No, I wouldn't. No. Mm-mm. No, if anything, we would move into like deeper queens, but, you know, you do what we got to do. For sure. For sure. Honestly, geographically, New York City should be in New Jersey, but. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jersey might as well be one of the one of the outer boroughs, honestly. Like Hoboken might as well be an outer borough. It's right there, and so many people commute in. New Jersey, honestly, should just be two states or part of... Mm. It should be like, the northern part should just be part of New York. Exactly. And the southern part should just be part of Pennsylvania. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hell, southern Jersey only exists for Pennsylvania people to go buy alcohol late night. If they've got nicer beaches. I like South Jersey beaches. The only thing I've ever seen on the Jersey Shore was Atlantic City, and I'm like, yep. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, there once, hopefully never again. I, you know what? That's what everybody said. And my husband and I went for the first time ever. Uh, we went to New Jersey Horicon in October. And it was at the showboat, which is, it's a little dingy, but it's also, um, they years ago lost their casino license. So instead of, our, um, you know, slot machines and stuff, it's just full of arcade games. So they were like, well, we have this space. We might, I'm like, that's fucking genius, first of all. So it's the largest arcade on the East Coast in the hotel, we had a fucking great time. And the beach was actually really nice because there's a, it's separated by a sandbar. So there's the boardwalk in the hotels, a big sandbar, and then the beach. Whereas like when I grew up going to the Jersey Shore, it was like the board, I think they've added a little bit of a bump now, but it used to just be boardwalk, beach. So it was just garbage. Um, yeah, there were certain, obviously certain areas of the city I would not want to venture into by myself. But like on the boardwalk, it was nice. We had a good time. I would go back. I'm just saying. I was, I was just pleasantly surprised because that's how people talk about it. I was there once in 2013 for an Exotica. Okay. And yeah, it was a shit show. It was Interesting. Because it's like, oh. Well, our industry is also shit at planning things. And well, it wasn't things. just it wasn't just the Exotica that was the okay. shit show. It was just like, huh. All of these casinos are more expensive than Vegas, but are lower than Fremont level casinos. Mm. Interesting. And also, I ended up on the wrong block and had a drug dealer like threaten my life. So, oh, there you go. You, you don't don't venture off the boardwalk. <laughs> I've told this story on air. This was completely my mistake because the bars are open real late. Yeah, we were on some bar at the boardwalk. Left everybody. I was staying at some Marriott, like, off boardwalk. Okay. And so I decided, just walk it back. It's only a couple blocks. Mm-hmm. I stepped onto a block and went, this is not a block I should be on. Yikes. Even at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, yeah. this is not a block I should be on. But I well, start- Especially at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> well, generally, like, a lot of the scumbags are asleep by 4. Yeah. I had to, yeah. Yeah. But as, I, as I'm hustling down the block, some dude from a stoop's like, yo, man, want some smoke? Like, nah, man, I'm good. And it just the string of profanity and threats that came. Like, you're right, dude. Your sales pitch worked. I want some smoke now. <laughs> I mean, he was disappointed. He really, really wanted to get to know you. I think he just wanted that 4 a.m. sale. Like, I know. I'm he's, being he's, cheeky. He, he had a quota to meet. Yeah. And like, oh, I haven't made enough sales this hour. Hey, there's a dude. The fuck, man? You're going to hurt my quota? I don't come get my commission unless I make my fucking quota. <laughs> motherfucker going to cost me. That's my baby's formula, motherfucker. Well, you, like you said it, y- your mistake. Oh, 100%. But as I hustled down the block, some poor bastard 
was coming this way. And oh, no. I I thought this dude was like, oh, shit, he sent me up. I started charging this guy. Like, I'm like, oh, if I'm fighting, I'm, I guess I'm fighting. Oh, God. And some poor bastard who probably is retelling the story like, yeah, some douchebag white. Because, I like, I was at an official after party earlier, so I was, like, in nicer clothes. Like, uh, okay. Like, in a nice button down. Like, you, you stood out a little bit. Yeah. But I just started charging this guy. Like, oh, I guess we're fighting. And he just, what the fuck? I'm like, oh shit! You weren't with that guy. I just kind of kept running. <laughs> oh my god, dude! Wow, you were you were charged up. I just had my life threatened like thirty seconds earlier. <laughs> it's four o'clock in the morning. I'm all, like, that poor random dude. Yeah, that poor that that random dude was just like, what have I walked into? Yeah, he went down the wrong block too. He's just like, yeah, yeah. Some dude, douchebag white dude, just almost fucking decided to fight me. What the fuck's ha- what is up with this city? Yeah, I definitely wouldn't go off the boardwalk. Definitely not the surrounding neighborhood around it. No, no. But I, we had a great time. I, I would go back. I'm just saying. If I went back, honestly, I just want to go to the knife and fork again. Yeah, oh, we didn't get to do that. We did not do that. We Yeah, we, 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 we were trying not to spend too much money because we spent way too much money in New Jersey Horicon. So... Yeah, we didn't have a huge food budget left. We did go, we got brunch at the Ocean, though, which is one of the newer hotel casinos. It was nice. It was really good. So, yeah, I, I'm a big proponent of, like, occasionally you got to do some fucking fine dining. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. You got to, like, I, I tend to, I, I may put myself into debt for some fine dining occasionally, like. Food, foodies, yeah. yeah. When I travel, that's really how I judge a place. It's like, how are my fucking meals? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I mean, I like trying to find holes in the wall, but if it's not, if I don't know a local, I'm less likely to just kind of wander into one, you know? Because oh, you no, say, that's not the adventure. Uh, yeah, you say that as a dude, as a woman walking around by herself, not so much. Fair, fair, not fair. Not so much, yeah. This is why you need to employ dudes to, like, taste test and... <laughs> I, lo- I mean, I love the hole in the wall is like the little places that nobody knows about. That's always where the best fucking food is. But I'm not going to wander around a city I don't know by myself without. Yeah. It- not an American city. Other countries, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. All right. Again, as a woman, I just, I don't know. I, just, I, I think you'd be perfectly fine in Tokyo. I, I watch a lot of true crime. I don't know, man. I don't trust anybody <laughs> You got to look at the statistics just because anecdotally like 20 I, people were kidnapped. No, because that would be my luck. I would be that bitch. No, that that's I'm like, I don't care what the numbers say. It's with my luck. I'm not coming back. No. Well, hopefully you come back and then you have a good podcast story. Jesus. <laughs> As a professional podcaster, sometimes you just got to do things for the story. I suck dick for money. I have plenty of stories. But uh, don't in- involve fucking crimes in other countries. Yeah, hopefully. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I will. I'm. I'm good. I have plenty of fun stories that aren't going to involve me getting kidnapped. <laughs> well, hopefully not. <laughs> I'm just narrowly avoiding kidnapping, though. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'll eat pussy instead. Thank you. But you could do both. No, no. I'll. Eat test- I mean, you could. You could. I will but- eat tested pussy and stay here. I'm fine, good. fine. Plenty to do here. I live in New York. I don't need to. I'm, I'm good. There's plenty to do. You don't want to travel abroad? And- Not that much, to be honest. No. Really? No. I just. I enjoy traveling. I would like to. I don't know. Maybe it's just it could, like. The realist in me is still just it's so fucking expensive right now that it's not even something I'm considering at the moment. You know what I mean? So like maybe long term eventually, but definitely not on the current priority list. Fair, fair. Flights are fucking wild. It's going to cost me $380 one way to go home from fucking Ontario. Well, that's what you get for flying out of Ontario. Uh, It's cheaper than LAX. Really? At least it's an overnight, so that's maybe possibly why. But because I'm I'm staying with a friend in Ontario, why the hell would I go to all the way to LAX? I'm going to end up spending the difference on a fucking lift. True, true. Then sadly. And it's a way smaller airport. So if I show up with like half an hour to go, I'm like, well, I'll be fine. Fair, 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 fair. Oh yeah, I'm never going to LAX again if I can help it. Mm-mm. Between Burbank and Ontario, why? 
Why? As an LA local price point is the only reason I ever. They're, at least for me, like when I've looked, they're pretty much the same. Like LAX is not doing a whole lot to like really incentivize me using their airport, unfortunately. So if they want to start making it like, you know, at least like 75 bucks cheaper then sure. But right now it's like, it'll be 20 bucks. And I'm like, I will spend more than that on a lift because I'm from New York. I don't have a driver's license. So when I come out here, I have to factor that into my budget. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You guys in your fucking fancy public transportation. I mean, I did when I first got into the industry. So I've been in the industry five years. When I got out here, it was the first time I'd ever been out here. I did not realize the whole Roger Rabbit premise was fucking real. Oh, yeah. Roger Rabbit is Chinatown for kids. I was like, wait, so GE actually, like, did this to... uh, What? Between GE, Firestone, AAA... Holy shitballs! Yeah, That blew my fucking mind. Absolutely blew my mind. For the audience, go Google the fucking red line or the red car fucking map from 1920-something. You could get to Malibu on public transportation. Malibu! Like, what? Roger Rabbit was real! Yeah, that that absolutely blew my mind. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I, it's such a privileged thing to say, but like, the subway is my least favorite, most favorite, and least favorite part of living in New York. It's so convenient and everything is so accessible, but it also j- is just gross and unreliable. Um, but yeah, it, it is. I mean, I I went from I, I grew up in Central New York, and so I went to college for a semester in Pittsburgh and then moved back to the city. I just, I never needed, I never got a driver's license because I was not going to be getting a car in high school. I knew that that wasn't a thing. I'm like, I'm not getting a car, so why the fuck should I bother? And then I just never needed it. So, yeah, I don't need one in the city. And (laughs) that's going to be a real culture shock when I move out to the burbs, but (laughs) I'll do it. I, I mean, I know I can. I just didn't need it, you know. If all the idiots driving in LA prove anything, you can do it. Don't worry. Oh my God. I'm like, that person got their license? Yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> You'll be A-OK. I promise the you. Fucking Lyft driver on my way here. We hadn't even pulled, we're pulling out of where I'm staying and almost get T-boned by a Rolls Royce because he was only look, looking to the left, checking in. I was an literally, I am so passive. I'm such like a quiet little, I don't want to cause trouble. But I was just in the backseat like, oh, 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 oh. And if I hadn't done that, he wouldn't have seen it. And just, <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, okay, I'll be fine. Hey, million dollars worth of liability insurance on you while you're in one of the ride chairs. You could have been well to do. Oh, that's true. Maybe I should have just let it happen. I mean, I'm glad that you're here mostly for the content. And also because you're out of harm, but yeah, you know, mostly the content. <laughs> but mostly the content. Yep. That would have been a funny text though. Like, hey, sorry, um... Got T-boned in a lift. Won't be there. <laughs> I mean, I could have drove out with a field recorder and got you in the ER. It would have been a first for the podcast. Oh. We've done remote shows before. We have never done one from an ER. Yeah, I've seen it, but then I still, then I would not have been getting my other boyfriend off camera dick tomorrow. So that would have been bad. I mean, depending on the nature of the inj- injuries. Yeah, yeah. But if I had to check into a hospital, yeah, but you're right. Depending. If it was like in and out, maybe. Yeah. I mean, a broken leg is just a minor inconvenience for sex. Yeah, but I uh, know, but I have paid shoots at the end of the week too. That would suck. I need. Maybe, to- you can maybe turn them into fetish shoots. No, <laughs> I wish. I wish it was that simple. Come on, you want a girl at a walking cast? It's fine. Ah, uh, nope, nope. I'd be like, who? Who do we have to replace her? Ah, uh, that would be miserable. Mm-hmm. No, I, I am. I'm very happy to work, though. So. Well, I'm very happy you didn't get into a car accident on the yeah, way here. As am I. Yes. As hilarious as the ER interview would have been. <laughs> Just all hopped up on morphine. I, You know, I I wish I could say it would have been entertaining, but um, when I got my wisdom teeth taken out, like, it's, it, you know, it's, it's a thing that gingers, we just, we have a higher tolerance for medication and things like that. I woke up, got all, I had all four removed at once, which people were like, you're insane. But Wait a minute. why would people, you not do that? I know. Some, well, because some people are like, take, you're not going to be able to eat anything for it. Like, just do one half, let it heal, and then go back. I was like, that sounds like a bad idea. I'm just going to 
Yeah, I got all I, I got all four of mine done at once. But you know, they make you have somebody come there to make sure that you get home okay. So my husband was with me and he was so ready with his phone to get like hopped up on, you know. Nope. I like, get out of the chair and I sit up and I'm like, we're good. All right, cool. Yeah, I could take the subway by myself right now if I needed to. Like, I was genuinely disappointed that I wasn't going to have, like, funny, doped-up stuff for him. So, yeah, I don't even think I would have been very entertaining for you in the ER, to be honest. This would It would have been just like this, except I would be in a hospital bed. Very are, you, are you claiming that you're not being very entertaining right now? Like, what? We don't need this level of self. It wouldn't be more entertaining. Is oh, what? don't worry. I, w- I would have tried to play it off. Oh, okay. I, I mean, like, I could fake it if you wanted, but... You are an actress. I mean, I am the Meryl Streep of fake orgasms, that's for sure. <laughs> You'll never know. You'll never know which ones are real. Does that mean a lot of nominations and just no wins? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Always the bridesmaid, never a bride. Uh, no, I have won one award, actually. But um, not for faking an orgasm, I No, <laughs> not for faking an orgasm. That should be a fucking category. Right? That AVN, Xbiz, what of you? Best fake orgasm. Why is that not an award? Because, I mean, if you could be like, oh, you won it. And you'd be like, oh, no, that was that was a real one. Oh, shit. Okay, who's 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 runner-up? Like, that would be a lot of fun, actually. Honestly, why are there not porno Razzies? Mm, oh, they're, well, yeah. Like, deliberately, like, this was terrible. Yeah, yeah. that would be fun. That'd be a lot of fun. That would be a really entertaining award show. I mean, hell, the best fake orgasm definitely could be a porno Razzie. Or the best worst fake orgasm. The best worst fake (laughs) orgasm, yes. Because I feel like like, the best fake one, people really, if you're good at it, they'll never know. And guys will tell me like, oh my God, I can feel your pussy clamping down. That's so hot. And I'm like, oh, bless your heart. You think I'm really coming? No, I just, I squeeze it when I fake it too. (laughs) Well, you probably shouldn't tell them that in the moment. No, I don't. I'm sorry. Oh. That's my head. Oh, yeah. That's me in my head. Whisper oh, to my God. Could you imagine like, oh, my God, I could feel you. Yeah, bless your heart. You really think so? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a 12-hour day now. Oh, Fuck. my God. Can you imagine? No, it's that's just the track in my head where I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's cute. So male talent, don't watch this. Like, there should be a disclaimer before that part. Like, no, That's not to say I don't. It's just... Not often. Again, it's entertainment. So it's like nobody wants to see somebody laying there starfishing. It's just, I'm a performer. That's what I do. I exaggerate slightly sometimes. It's it's fine. It's not to say like none of it's real. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's more like you'll just never know which one is. Yeah, I have to go back to the footage and like the zoo- <laughs> fucking Zupruder film, like back into the right, back into the right. Like back that, in- one, that one, that, that one, that one. Yep. No, damn it. You'll never know. You'll never know. I will never tell. Some weird porn fan out there, go through all the footage. Oh, there's that's a lot of footage. I've well, that's why I'm calling for the weird porn fan to do it. Like, five years, almost five years of footage you'd have to go through. And a lot of websites you'd probably have to subscribe to as well. Well, then you should be encouraging this, hopefully. Oh, I agree. I'm just, it's not likely. Hey, unlikely things happen in this world. That's true. It's true. Go, go back through all the footage and try to figure out. Be which real. ones are real and which ones are not? Well, actually, there was one fan who did do a comparison video that and that was on the hub, and I ended up getting it transferred to me because it was just two scenes next to each other, basically. And one was a Spazoo scene with Nathan Bronson. What's up, Nathan? And a scene with Private Society with Jack Slayer. And they were side to side. like they No had, relation, by the way. No relation. They had an orgasm counter on each and it was like, oh, the big black dick made her come so many more times. And I was like, oh, it's really cute that you think every one of those was real. It's real cute that you think that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. I also didn't need, like, you know, Neosporin after working with Nathan. So I, 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 like, I like boyfriend dick a lot. I can grind on boyfriend dick. I'm not getting my cervix smashed by boyfriend dick. So it's in different kinds of pleasures, different kinds of intensities, different kinds of different kinds of scenes. Plus, Nathan can cook for you afterwards. I mean, I want to go on a show so bad. You hear that, Nathan? Nathan. You hear that, Nathan? It's been a couple of years since I fucked Nathan. <laughs> Nathan, I know you watch this on occasion. What the fuck? I'll have to tell. I'll have to text him. Be like, hey. What's really shitty is he actually had a cancellation on his show earlier this week. No way. 
Why? <laughs> oh, shit. I wish I would have known. I did. I, I, saw his, oh, fuck. I saw his Instagram story like eight hours after he posted. Like, oh, I just no. seen. That's the one I want to do hanging with Nathan. I'm like, well, I wish I had seen this earlier. Oh, fuck. I know. Fucking Instagram. Right? I never see the things I want to see. Or Twitter. I'm really, I really try and like tailor my Twitter experience so that I'm trying to like, that's where I book work a lot is on Twitter. You know, some like. This happened because of Twitter. Muting some people or turning off retweets for people who do like, you know, I, I'm all for doing shared retweets and all that. But then there are people who just retweet like a hundred accounts in a row. Or they're like fan central, fan central. Right? Exactly. So I try and tailor it and I, I'm, it's getting better. Instagram is hopeless though. It is absolutely hopeless. I could like the same person's post every single time they post if I go directly to them, but they still wouldn't show up in my feed. God damn it. And on top of it, Instagram is turning into TikTok where it's like, I don't know who these people are. Why oh, yeah. am I getting their fucking real right a now? recommend. Oh my God, I love my husband so much. I, I do. I love you, baby. You know that. But his he'll, he gets sucked into those the reels where it's like if you go to hit search, you know, and there's all the recommended reels because he'll like, a you know, a little dachshund video. And then he's just in reels like, <laughs> like we're in bed and he's showing. I'm like, yeah, I saw that on TikTok last week. No, that's real cute, babe. No, I saw that on TikTok yesterday. That's cute. <laughs> he's like an old man. It's really cute. <laughs> Sometimes I'll humor and be like, oh, that's adorable. I didn't send you that one two days ago. It's fine. Hey, he is the people that Instagram and Facebook are, mar or I Meta, know. Meta, I'm sorry. Meta is, oh my God, oh. Meta. is, is, is targeting. Yeah. yeah, he's exactly the target audience. Because he'll never get a TikTok. That's good. Yeah, I, I got one just when I, I was obviously fighting and kicking and screaming like most other millennials until lockdown. And people were like, it's basically Vine. And I was like, oh, I could get behind that. I fucking loved Vine. Okay. If it's, and then, yeah, I, I mean. Hyper censored Vine. Well, yeah, very hyper censored. I mean, it like, yeah. I, I I have put clips from the hell. Speaking of Nathan Bronson, I put a clip of Nathan Bronson talking about taking a makeup sponge out of a co-star. Oh, bless. And that got muted immediately. Unfucking believable. Like, there's nothing graphic about that. Yes, he is describing a graphic act, but it is verbal description. Mm -hmm. Like, you couldn't even see either me or Nathan's nipples. Like, no, it, but actual hate speech. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave that up. That's fine. Way to go, Dick. I they they I did the you know how you scroll over somebody's profile and you can have a video. I was I try to be funny like I'm not just like a, uh, t I don't, I'm not good at thirst trapping at all. I'm way too awkward. So I did instead. I had a video of me and again, more to my point, trying to, like deep throating a banana, but it was a really soft one, so it just got kind of mushed <laughs> up in my face, and then I just like kind of laugh. They immediately like boom, you're flagged. You can't post for a week. Like, are you fucking kidding me? It's a banana. It's yeah. an, it, it's suggestive, but it's also me like choking on a smushed banana. Are you kidding me? But on the flip side, someone who is probably not even a legal age, full on shaking their ass. Oh yeah. Hey, okay. Or somebody like, you know, like a Kardashian posting Instagram pics with nipples out. That's fine. But well, if a sex worker takes a picture in a bikini. <gasps> I have a theory on that. Which, well, it's money. Well, it is money, but it's also representation because those people are represented by major fucking agencies and management companies who have insider connections to people at those tech companies. Yeah, that's and they're like paying them off. Or just interpersonal connections like, yeah. yo, if you flag my fucking client, this whole client list may, goes away. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, that's that that's true. I mean, it's a theory. I have no proof I'm, of this. I'm sure it's a little bit of both. You know, like, yeah, they're like, oh, we'll look the other way because you bring money to our platform, whatever. But yeah. Well, because at the end of the day, the social media companies, their whole goal is to keep you on the platform. Yeah. And if someone who's like, I can leverage these people with millions of fucking subs or followers to just not post for a day or two. Mm -hmm. How do you like that? They'll be clutching their pearls. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. What are you going to do? Well, we could try to organize adult, but that'd be hilarious. That's like herding cats, dude. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's never going to happen. I, I, it, it would take a very strong person to get that going. I just, and a patient person, of which I am neither. Well, and the problem is because of such the turnover in adult. 
Exactly. Some people come in, for, they make a splash for a year, and then they're gone forever. Or six fucking months even. Mm-hmm. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's it, it's like a revolving door. Yeah. It's like Arkham Asylum. <laughs> Shit. But no Batman. Shout out to any of the Batman nerds. Why does Batman keep putting them in a place that doesn't fucking work? <laughs> so, no. Well, the thing about it is... Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne is a fucking billionaire. He could fund Arkham. He could. Yeah. Oh, there's, oh, there's, I love the arguments of like, just, it, yeah, he could, would do way more for Gotham if he actually acted more like his parents and just, you know, maybe funded things properly. I mean, depending on who's writing him. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Depending on who's writing him. Because, uh, you know, I'm sure you've watched the most recent Batman movie. Oh, I, are you kidding? I was, when they mentioned, when he did the, uh, the interchange, the exchange on the stairs at the funeral, I was like, oh, that's from the novels. Yeah. And I got very excited. Yeah, they the whole time, I'm I'm I'm, wait, I'm really hoping, and my not spoilers. Fuck no, it's not the the sequence where the Riddler reveals the whole Wayne trilogy, you know, the issue, and then there's this giant. He gave him hush money, and there's this giant freeze frame on the word hush. hush. I'm like, let's go, give me a hush, please. I want I want hush, and I want this new canon is ripe for the long Halloween. Yeah. I am dying for long Halloween. Let's go. Get it. Let, let's go, Matt Reeves. What What do we got to do? What do we got to do? Honestly, I think this canon does have a lot more potential than anything that they've done in a while. Agree. It, it feels, when I first saw the trailer, I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, we're doing Batman again. And I say that as an avid Batman fan. You know, I was like, why? Why are we? Oh, wait. Might this finally be the noir detective Batman film of my wet girl dream, wet fangirl dreams? Like, is it? You can't even say it properly. You're I so can't, excited. I can't. I'm so, I was, and then it was, it was everything I ever wanted. I mean, there were definitely some, still some major plot holes. Oh, but. for sure. No, there were plot holes. We didn't need the fucking Joker again. They got to make their money. No, I just, it's clearly already being set up to be at least a trilogy. Wait. Put him in, put him as a teaser in the end of the second one, into the third one. Like, I know you can't have Batman without Joker. They're foils. I get it. We don't need him yet. There's so many other amazing villains in the DC universe. Give me, give me Calendar Man. Give me a proper representation. Wait, wait, you're really going to go, there's so many uh, amazing villains that go start with Calendar Man. I just, you're, you're really going to start with Calendar Man. Because Long Halloween. Fair, fair, but it's still. But I'm, or like a really a proper representation outside of the animated series or the video games of Freeze. You know, give me a good live. I mean, I love Arnold. Don't get me wrong, but like you know. I mean, that's a villain that has good motivation. And- exactly, exactly. Give or give like there's so much potential. So I don't know. Well, I'm interested to see where it goes. I mean, I enjoyed their take on the Riddler, except for I did. How it was did a little it, real, but it was a little real, but it was also like man. How do you get such a following in social media? He only had like 500 followers, though. Yeah, but they all showed up at the end. Like, it's true. Like, I, I could do a call to action. I have more than 500 followers. That many are showing up That's to commit true. crimes. Well, no, no. Let's think about it. Let's think about it. He had 500. And then at the stadium, it, I would say it looked like maybe 50 to 100 showed up. A 10% for your call to action? That's really good fucking numbers. It, it is good. It is good, but it's not like, oh, how did he get that many? It, in that's a, city, a mi- that's, In a city like Gotham that's supposed to be basically New York, that's a very small. So I don't, I'm the, just saying. I'm just saying. If you only have 500 to get 10% to do a full-on call to action. For, it's impressive, yes. To commit crimes. Not even like subscribe or. Right, <laughs> right. To actually like go buy weapons. Yeah, yeah. No, it's impressive. It's impressive. To cosplay you, commit crimes. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know, that, that that that's a pretty persuasive call to action. It is. Well, oh no, I'm not gonna subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be a good girl and not. No, 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 no. This is not the show for that. It's just. It's too real with the fucking incels. You know, it's easy to motivate people when they're full of hate. Just saying. It's true. You it's... know. Yeah. I, I mean, I loved it over. I loved his. I loved Paul's take on it. I thought it was great, but I was like, oh, this is fuck. This is a little fucking real. I talk to these guys online all the time. <sighs> Just saying, it was a little, it was a little real. It was definitely realistic. I, I appreciated that. I, I did appreciate that. I mean, it was a very grounded movie, even more so than the Nolan ones. Like it was just, oh my God, Peter, Peter Wright, Gordon. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna laugh at me because everybody always does. My favorite character 
in the Batman universe is Jim Gordon. Okay. No contest. My favorite character. Okay. And people laugh at me all the time. Like, seriously, you've got like Catwoman and you've got Ivy. Jim Gordon is a truly incorruptible man. Like he's flawed, but he is a good man. And that's a really hard thing to find. Like a truly like just inherently good person. And apparently not mentally ill either. Cause exactly. Because there are good people in Gotham, but they're generally mentally ill. They're all, they're a little batshit. Yeah. yeah. No pun intended, right? No pun intended. <laughs> no, I love watching movies with my husband because we both, we watch them from ver- very different perspectives. He watches it from like a director perspective because he went to film school and I watch it from an actor perspective. So before, right before my trip, we watched the Batman again. And I think this was like my fifth time watching it. I caught something that he hadn't seen before, but then he pauses at the uh, toward the end where uh, Bella Royale is giving her speech, you know, in the sling, like, we will rebuild. We need to restore people's faith. The way it was lit, there is this, like, one shining sunlight ray on Jim's face, and everyone else is dark. And I was like, oh, yeah, because he's the truly only incorruptible one. That... I fucking love Jim Gordon and Peter was amazing. I loved I loved him. Thought he was And his reward for being uncorruptible is his daughter getting fucking I, shot. I know. But he, even that, even you know, the fucking killing joke, even that doesn't break him. The, he's, he's a badass. I, I mean, yeah, he cheats on his wife, but nah, there's He still has a cock. There's a lot of nuance there. Yeah, there's a lot of issues there. I he's not that's he's flawed, but he's inherently good. Yeah. So, I love him. <laughs> when I was getting my my neck tattooed, um, the, and I it was like the one tattoo that I did not get from my regular woman because I happened to walk by this place in the subway one day and it was new. It was like, I'll try it out. And it was your more kind of typical tattoo shop. And I said that and they just, these big like biker dudes just kind of laughed at me the whole time as they were tattooing the the Keaton and the Nolan symbol on the, the back of my neck. I was like, he's a good man. Okay. I'm going to stop talking. I'm the customer. I'm always I right. All right. For first of all, fuck off. I'm paying you. They their shop closed a year after that anyway, so karma's a bitch. Did you have anything to do with that? No. It was literally I'm just like if you, that's how you talk to all your customers. I'm not surprised. Like shit. You don't I can understand being like, "Oh, okay, that's an interesting choice," but to like full on kind of mock me throughout the appointment that I'm not getting repeat business. In what world do you mock fucking white women y'all are but stereotypically the ones that are going to cause a lot of problems it's true it's true yeah it was a brazen well this was like before karen be it's like karen's were a thing but it wasn't a thing you know what i mean like people like white women tears is a thing but like karen's weren't quite a thing yet but yeah you're right that's a risky move that is definitely a risky move like i'm not that white woman but you don't know that they don't know that right yeah no they that's you're right that would that was i mean well they pro- they must have done it to enough of the wrong one cuz they're no longer in business. Say lobby. It's so much easier to be nice. It's just so, it takes so much less energy to be nice to people. I don't understand. Or hell, if you have mean shit to say, shut your fucking mouth. Like you just Say it to yourself in your head. Yeah. Or on a podcast. Or to your friends later when they leave. Right. Like, you believe that bitch? Okay, like, fine. But there when I'm still going to potentially be paying you? Okay. So Yeah, it's a weird life choice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas my regular tattoo artist, who I fucking love to death, is this badass European woman who grew up in Italy. And once I got into porn, she would like, we talk about porn while she's tattooing me the whole time. Or she'll tell me about how she used to be like, she used to smuggle ecstasy into clubs in her pussy. And I'm like, that's who I want tattooing me. Thank you. Right? Yeah. She's fucking awesome. I love her. Sounds like she should be a guest on my fucking show. Oh, she's amazing. Oh. I wish. Yeah. She'd be very entertaining. All right. Well, show's over. We're going to make that happen. Just... <laughs> you got to come to New York, though. I doubt she'd come out here. Uh, all right. And it's been a couple of years since I've been to New York. I got to go back. Come to, we'll, we'll, we'll make a whole thing of it. Come to New York. I guess what I'll probably roll out there again next time the Legion of Skanks does Skank Fest out in New York. When is that usually? Uh, well, COVID's fucked up everything. Yeah, yeah. They're doing one in Vegas. Uh, late, like... In August, okay. which I'm not going to because, like. Vegas in August? Well, uh, Vegas in August is also just, like, uh, not, half the fun was going to New York and, like, fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Besides the commuting from a story to Greenpoint, but yeah. I mean, I to be I did not this this past couple years, my husband made friends with one of his um co-workers and they live in Brooklyn. And in order to get to them, we have to take the G. And I was like, it's not a myth. It exists. It runs. I mean, I, I've seen it on a map. I've never actually seen it run. Not once. It does. It exists. It's real. I know. And on the weekends, that's when we go see them. We've managed to be, we're on a G on the weekends. So it, it does exist. And this is why the MTA is $25 billion in debt. Just for that line. Just for the fact that we're both like, wait, really? <laughs> like, yeah, no, it runs. It actually does. No, but yeah, we'll prioritize making the uh, the tourist stations look pretty rather than fixing signal problems. Because yeah. that makes sense. Totally. Yeah, totally. Because the tourists are going to be the ones who are contributing monthly. Oh, wait, no, they're not. It was one of those things where like, I saw an article recently about like MTA's fucking financial woes. And I was just like, why is New York City treating this like this is a for-profit business. I know. Like, this is public transportation for New York City. Mm -hmm. This should just be funded. Exactly. Or if you want to be price gouging, I'm sorry, but price gouge the tourists. Make a single, make it like a day pass, like 35 to like 50 bucks or something. I don't know. What the fuck? Like, why are you making it our <laughs> Hey, it's already price gouged as fuck. To exactly. That's what I'm saying. But like, I, the I, tourists don't fucking know better. But, but I'm saying like, to take... The fucking train inside Kennedy to the actual MTA stations, like fucking seven dollars when I was there last time. Mm -hmm. like, well, you, you have to. There's a separate. Yeah, you have to. There's an air train charge. Right. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Or the path is the same way. Ridiculous. I, I have at 34th Street. If I want to go to Hoboken, I have to buy a path ticket, which is on. You can't use your Metro card for that. Yeah. It's already. It's like two. What the hell is it? Like two seventy five a ride now. That's fucking crazy. I mean, hell. I guess it's been yeah four or five years since I've been in New York, and it was like seven dollars to just get out of the airport to a real train yeah. station. Like this is bullshit. It is you're, bullshit. You're, you're holding me fucking hostage in your airport. Mm -hmm. I'm fucking. That's why I don't go to JFK. <laughs> well, no, that's why I'm a bougie bitch and I lift. Well, it was one of those things. Then I can write it off because I only travel for porn. So fair, fair. I was meeting a friend in Astoria, and it was just like. I really don't want to JFK it to Astoria. Yeah. If I'd flown into LaGuardia. I was say, why don't you fly into LaGuardia? <laughs> the price difference in the flights was like hundreds. Oh, Jesus. Doesn't that suck? So unfair. Because then, well, I mean, also the new LaGuardia, they're doing a lot of work on it and it's nice. I'm like, God damn it. They're going to start charging more now. Well, I'm a Delta frequent flyer. They, the Delta terminals on LaGuardia, LaGuardia have been great for years. They have. But like, like Southwest, for example, the Southwest Terminal was a shit hole. Like the ceilings were, you know, like somebody who was like six foot would be like hunched. And now I'm like, oh, God damn it. Now it's nice. They're going to charge more money for it. The current state of affairs in New York, nothing shouldn't, everything should be fucking nice. It, most of like actual New York, New York is full of Wall Street bros that have money. Yeah, but they don't, they don't contribute to the economy the same way. They just go to bars. I know. And hell. Or like, you know, the Upper East Side and the Upper West that they have their own little like microcosms of economies, like the rich people. I used to dog walk. I was a dog walker for six years and I dog walked on the Upper East Side. So I got to, I'm like, oh, you have your own pharmacies. Fuck you. You don't contribute at all. You go to Bergdorf Goodman, you go to the park and you go to all these fancy restaurants and you have your own God, you don't go to Dwayne Reed. You have your own pharmacy. They don't contribute. Hey, they do spend a lot of money at Sapphire because that was. But oh, the, the Wall Street bros do. Not like, I'm not, I'm talking like old New York money. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, no, no, The Wall Street bros. Holy fuck. Because last time I was at Sapphire New York with a feature. Which one? 39 or 60? Uh, it was the Mid-City one, so. Mid-City. Mid like, or it, it's it's more it easy. Like a sports bar or more like loungy? It was the one with the steakhouse. That's 60. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was there with the feature, and I knew it was going to be an interesting time because I, the feature was already inside, and I showed up with friends, and the, the doorman saw me, and they're just like, you're here with the feature, aren't you? Well, because I was dressed like this. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, because I, I went, like, I wasn't going to wait in line. I just walked, right. so, started to walk up to the door. He's like, oh, you're you're here with the feature, aren't you? Well, like, yep. And then when it was inside, I was like, there are suspenders as far as I can see. <laughs> That's hilarious. The only thing that could get them to come uptown. 
it's so weird. It's just like, wow, this is, is there insider trading happening right now? Like, Probably. <laughs> This is so weird. I'm I'm a 39 fan myself because it's much smaller and it has more of a loungy vibe. It's on like 30, I think it's on like 38th between 5th and 6th. Um, and that's actually, that's where I, I had never been to a strip club before in my entire adult life until the year before I got into the industry. And I went to see Cleo Valentine feature dance because she had just done the Suicide Squad parody. And I was like, "Wee, Harley Quinn. I love Cleo. She's an old she's friend. She's amazing. She's an old friend of mine, so. Love her to death. Okay, then I have to tell you my Cleo story. So we, it's my, my husband's first time at a strip club too. And not for like, not like oh, we were opposed to it. It was just not the kind of thing that we ever just got to do up until that point. So we went all out. Like we, we saved up. And I was like, well, we can't. We have to make sure we bring a lot of money to tip all the regular dancers because the feature dancers, sometimes the girls don't like them because it takes away their money. Oh, yeah. That's a very thing. Which is legit. If you go to see a, if you go to see somebody feature dance, tip the regular dancers, please, because they're going to lose money that night. It's just it, – it sucks, but it is. So we were like – we did – we were so naive. We sat toward the front and ended up doing bottle service. Yeah, they fucking loved us. Everybody loved us. I think we spent like $1,000. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> like, I think it looked, the bottle of champagne alone was like $400. Um, but we were tipping the girls all night. Girls were hanging out with us. And we were at the front. And I made, you know, um, in the Bad Suicide Squad, the black and gold dress that Margot Robbie wears, the black and the diamond. I made a tank top like that. And we were sitting in the front. And Cleo saw us sitting in the front. And she came and she kissed me. And it was the first time I'd kissed a woman since like high school. And I was just like, oh my God, you're so soft wow, this is the best night of my life. Awesome. And then like a year later, I was in the industry and she was like, oh, hey. <laughs> did she remember you? She did. Yes, because she's amazing. And she's Oh, yeah, she's a sweetheart. sweetheart. Yeah. Such a sweetheart. Yeah, no, I fucking love Cleo. I haven't worked with her yet, but someday. But yeah, that was my first ever strip club experience was Sapphire 39. That's wild. That's... I know, right? So, yeah, uh, I wonder if like, how long ago was this? That was 2017. No, Cleo, I think Cleo had moved out of New York at that point. Because Cleo lived in New York for quite some time. Yeah, no, I don't think she was living there. I think at that point she was traveling in. But yeah, no, she's because she's in Texas now. Yeah, she's right. back in Texas. But uh, yeah, she lived in New York for quite some time. We, yeah. we had some very drunken nights in New York. Aww. Oh, she's amazing. Love her to death. Yeah, she's so sweet. And like, yeah, it didn't have to. Could, it could have been like, oh, hey, you really did join the industry, huh, weirdo? But no, she's super sweet. Oh, no, she's an absolute fucking sweetheart. Like, Love her. I actually probably should text her at some point. Like, I haven't talked to her in a minute. Aww. Well, here, here's your sign. This is yeah. the universe telling you to text her. Like, oh, hey, Cleo, how you, how's things? Like, also should text her husband at some point. He's a friend of mine, too. Like, Aww. Like, yeah, hey. I, just, I love that that's my first ever strip club story. It's pretty fucking awesome. It's gonna, that is. It's a hard one to top. Just saying. I would love to also feature dance because I want to do, like, I did go-go for a little while. Not my thing. I, I didn't love it. It just... The hustle of it, I hated, like, the, like, get them to buy you drinks part of it. I fucking hated that. It's just not, I'm like, I'm, I don't want to, like, try and force this guy to spend $16 on a watered-down rum and coke. It's just not, it's not in my DNA. I can't, so I was a very bad dancer. But, like, I would love to feature dance and, like, do, like, a, you know, burlesque like type of, make it a whole thing. It's still very much a hustle, though. It is, it is, but it's a different kind of hustle. It's not like, you know, like I could get butts in the seats and they'll be, you know, they'll be tipping and they'll be spending money, but it's not going to be a, I don't know. It just felt different. Fair, 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 fair. I, I know depending on the club, you know, it's very much still encouraged to like try to hustle fucking private dances and shit like that as a feature. Well, that I don't mind. I don't mind if it's going to be like, yeah, hey, or I'll sign, D you know, sign DVDs and do a private, but it more so like. You know, just your regular guy coming in off the street after work to see a dance and you're trying to hustle like four drinks out of it. You know what I mean? It's like it's if it's a feat, it's an event. If you're a feature, it's like especially if it's not something you do all the time, people are more likely to be like, oh, I'll save up and spend a little money for that. I don't know. It feels different to me. Maybe I'm naive, but I, that would be fun. Fucking do it. I would. I like to perform. I like entertaining. So I would love to make it like a big you know, just more of a, like a burlesque, like put on a show kind of thing. Some of the feature routines are fucking wild. Have exactly. You ever... Yeah. I would make it a, like there'd be themes, you know, 
Have you ever mm-hmm. have you ever gone to like any of the fucking award shows for the exact answers? No. Oh, that shit gets crazy. Oh, I, bet. I bet those are fun. Like, because they put on their like a fucking yeah. game performances. I was oh shit, it was a couple of years back, but I was at the one like they did downtown at like uh Dames Games. And fucking there was a sexy predator, like the predator. <gasps> Oh, like full fishnet bodysuit, fucking the mask. Like. Oh my god, yes! Holy fuck, that's amazing. I'm just like I, I never thought I would, you know, get a partial erection looking at the predator, but yes, here we are. That's amazing, though. Pussy face. That's fucking amazing. Yeah. Some of my favorite burlesque shows are like that. Like the oh god, they're I'm gonna forget their name. There's a troupe in particular does like like stormtrooper and like Star Wars burlesque. That regularly come into town, but like um, when I worked, I, I also did merchandise on Broadway for my the first six years of my New York life. And one of the girls who did the hearing aids in the front of house, she was a burlesque performer. So I got to see a lot of burlesque. And if you've never been to a burlesque show, it is so much fun. It's a lot less about the sort of. It, it's not a strip show. It's really more of it's more theatrical and it's more fun and tongue in cheek, and it's. It's a good fucking time. Highly recommend. Yeah, I would much rather go to a burlesque show than a strip club. After working, it's very different vibes. Well, but very different vibes. And also, I've worked in strip clubs for so fucking long. Yeah. It's just like I do not want to be here. Yeah, I, I do not like spending money on window shopping. Yeah, oh, that's so interesting. That's the second time I've heard that this trip, window shopping. I mean, yeah, you're like, I can't take it home. Right, I, I'm not going to take it home. I just I, have to look at it. Right, I am not going to delude myself like. That I'm going to pull someone from a fucking strip club. Right, right. This happened one time in my whole life, yeah. and it was just like, uh, I was kind of in disbelief that this was happening. Aww. Like, like what, what? What? This is actually okay. Aww. Something, something's awry here. But it, it happened, but nine, 99 out of 100 times, not even 9 out of 10, 99 out of 100 times, you are not pulling a stripper. Yeah, yeah. She is there to make her fucking money. Exactly. It's it's a job. And also, I'm just, I'm not into the transactional nature of that shit. Like, yeah, that's, it's not everybody's cup of tea. I get it. Oh, and when I was younger, I was totally down. Like, I, I was totally down to pay for the illusion that you're into my bullshit and right, like, right. what you wanted me. As an older, wiser man, like, I, I understand how transactional this is. And like, right. it's cool. I appreciate you making your money. Just, it's not how I want to spend my money. Yeah, yeah. I, I Burlesque shows are fun because, God, just, I mean, I, people are like, oh, if you really like it, why don't you do it? I'm like, do you have any idea how much work it is? The costumes? Well, the, the amount of investing you have to make to do? That goes the Ooh. same for feature dancing, though. No, I know. And that's like, but it's not as, it wouldn't be as regular of a thing as like if I was doing burlesque. You know what I mean? So we'll see. I don't know. I'm just saying, Sapphire, I'm local. You wouldn't have to fly me in. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You can just be like, hey, I'm going to, you know, send I'm a car. A train. No, no, send a car for me. You're the feature. They need to send a fucking car they for you. They could send a car. They could send a car. It's true. But they don't have to you know, pick you up from the fucking airport, pay for a flight. Like, I want to do like a Halloween show. That would be so much fun. Like, I've got a whole, I've got a whole fucking number planned, but we'll see. We should reach out to some of the feature agents. Uh, yeah, I, f- I followed somebody recently on Twitter and somebody at Sapphire messaged me back on Twitter recently. Like they were like, oh, it's good to know you're local, but I just, I'm not a particularly big name. So I, I get it. They're probably like, it's not worth the investment, but we'll see. We'll see. There are plenty of performers that are not like the biggest name in performing that do really well as no. on the features. Oh no, I know I would bring in some damn good audience, but you know, it's, it's, we'll see if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Once. And I know some performers that honestly make more from feature dancing than anything else they're doing. Oh, I know. People who like tour just to feature, yeah, they're they're killing it. But, you know, it's it's all it's all like you said is the juice worth the squeeze? Do you want to be on the road most of the year or not? Like for me, it's just where I am in my life. I no, I don't want to be traveling. Do I want to be I you know, I miss my husband. Sue me. And unfortunately, most of the feature companies do not let significant others be your roadie. He wouldn't be able to anyway. Like he he works at my husband works a nine to five. He performs on the side, but he has to hold down the nine to five fort in New York. So yeah, it's not for everybody. It's definitely if, if I was younger, like before I was a tap, hell yeah, that would be a lot of fun. 
in my youth. That would have been fun, but... I don't know. I'm not sure it's as fun as people because I yeah I I no complaints either though. I loved my merchandise job. I fuck that was a great job. I got that at 19, and I was there until my mid 20s. That job killed. I fucking loved that job. I saw so much Broadway for free. You were just selling merch for Broadway. Yeah, you know, like when you go to see a show and people have programs, the T-shirts or whatever. That that was me. You, you think I have Broadway money? I, I appreciate you. <laughs> No, yeah. Also, I appreciate. Expensive. I appreciate you think I have Broadway class. Like well, that. No, see, that's a thing. That let's like break down that stigma. It's everybody can see Broadway isn't a class thing. The opera is still maybe like a class thing. Broadway isn't. It is. It is overpriced. I'll give you that. I mean, I was gonna say it might be. It might be getting better post COVID because they're like, please come back to the theater. I'm hoping things will be slightly more affordable. But. Yeah, no, that was me. I, I that was I, I probably sold people CDs and souvenirs at some point. If you saw Mamma Mia from 2006 to 2013, you saw me. Guaranteed. Just so weird to think about that I'm in just like some random tourist like photo box like website. Like, no, because they would take pictures of me all the time really it, random that would be hilarious if like right you're just in like and someone else who knows you from just adults like why the fuck <laughs> why do you look so familiar oh no i'm just expecting some fucking mope who's just full-on recognizes you like what the fuck no i did actually i did follow somebody recently follow somebody from uh spring awakening who uh, uh, god it's wild i say that and that's the look i get out here apparently it was only a big deal in new york i don't even know what spring awakening is spring awakening is like it's like rent but a little more niche it's based on a play and it takes place in like like late 18th early 19th century germany so it's about like school kids and their like their sexual awakening and all the consequences of sexual awakening. Like there's a coat hanger abortion, there's a suicide, there's simulated sex on stage with young actors, and so it's 2022 America. Got it. it I mean, it, it's it's wild. It was it was a cultural phenomenon in New York. So it's always interesting to come here and people are like, huh? Um, there's I'm wildly uncultured too. There's so. a documentary on HBO. Check it out. Um, it's it was very interesting. But yeah, if I it, like, I watched the documentary on my last trip here, and I got nostalgic, and so I followed one of the actors who was nice to me at that show because not all of them were. And he but was, stuck up actors never, never. Not so much stuck up as like you know, seventeen, still in high school, and in a Tony Award winning musical. So things you know go to your head. It's fine. But I was like, oh man, and he followed me back. I was like, thanks so much for the follow back. That's really cool. He was like, yeah, yeah, no. And I could just kind of tell even just like in the words via Instagram. I was like, yeah, I was one of the merch girls. He was like, oh, my God, I knew I knew your face. Like, that's hilarious. Yeah, I do porn now. What's up? <laughs> Thank you for being nice to me. Right. Uh, it goes a long way. Just be. It really does. Like, like, you know, the way people treat like the front of house, like the usher. Even, well, even like merchandise was really the low man on the totem pole because we were – the, I believe the only non-union people in the front of house. Merchandise was hired by the producers, not the house. So merchandise changed with shows. And, you know, like every time a new show came in, it might not be a Ju Jamson or a Schubert or a Niederlander show. It would be like, who's producing it? So yeah, like the ushers were almost always the same people. The, the janitors were the same people. The bar had its own set. Like the refreshments people had their own union, but merchandise was just kind of like, Hey, we're here. We didn't know how to organize yet. Sorry. Oh no, it's 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 similar to porn where it's like nobody's gonna bother. Nah. They're just in careers of people that won't organize labor. Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much my life. Yep. That's fine. It's like, do you have organized labor? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Technically, technically, and potentially. Podcasters fall under SAG AFRA, but technically, yeah. If you got real technical, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was a dog walker, I did, I did have insurance. And You're like, I was a union dog walker. I wasn't. No, no. I was like, I wasn't union, but I was insured, so that's something. If if you know, like your pipes burst while I was at your apartment or something, I would be insured for that. <laughs> 
Oh, it happens. It didn't happen to me, but it's happened. Someone clogged a toilet and then they took, they, they went, they flushed and they took the dog for like an hour long walk and they got back and the toilet had overflowed into the downstairs apartment. I swear, I swear to God, it wasn't me, but I, I do, the, one of the girls, it was, was one of my coworkers and I was like, oh my God, it was like $10,000 worth of damage. See, I would never take a shit in someone else's house when I was walking their you dog. Had, oh my God, I had, yeah, seriously, I had, well, I mean, if you stay over with them for like a week, you have to shit. I wouldn't do it if it was just like a day walk. Yeah, it was, there were bathrooms where I was like, I'm not using their bathroom. They scare me, rich people. But if you're staying for like a week, you're going to have to shit at some point. But I would always just, I would never leave the apartment until I made sure everything was good. No, you just shit on the lawn with the dog and bag it up. <laughs> it's not a lawn. It's New York. You're shitting in Union Square Park. People are used to that. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I mean, they'll appreciate that you're bagging it up. Mm. That's true. That's true. Yeah, pick up after your dog, people. I say that as a dog walker. Please. Hell, a friend of mine has a... Oh, she's a retired... I mean, I, I wouldn't want to say she's a retired performer, but she hasn't performed in a long time. But her boyfriend, fiance at the time, has a very, very good photo of her just popping a squat and taking a leak in the middle of a street in New York. While nice. We were, while we were up there and... Fuck, that's got to be... 2011? Fuck, I'm old. New York, we New Yorkers walk around with blinders on. We're, we're like like the horse blinders. We're just like I do not see anything in my peripheral. I just want to get from point A to point B. Yeah, we don't give a shit. I mean, this is somewhere on the Lower East Side, like middle of the night. Oh, then yeah, people are that's people are falling out of bars and people. yeah. No, we definitely had left some fucking bar on the Lower East Side, and like she just decided like she's wearing a cute skirt and just fucking decide to go for it. I mean. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah, I'm not knocking it. Was, we had more public restrooms, man. It's just hilarious that, you know, her dude at the time, like, took a really good photo of it. Well, I mean, now he, the people will be like, why aren't you filming that for content? <laughs> iPhones were quite good enough for content no, use at that point. No, not yet. Not yet. Oh, that's so funny. They weren't. No. Very grainy. Especially at night. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Very, very, barely could make out what was going on. It's just like, is that liquid coming down? Like, what, what's that? I hear that? noise. I hear noise that sounds like liquid. Man, we've 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 talked about some random shit. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Okay. Good. So this is pretty par for the course, then. Yeah, I thought you did some research. I thought you. I watched some, but I watched clips. So oh, I, you're like I clips. Only, I got pieces. The clips are like, oh, the clips are kind of on point. Or like, yeah, they're talking about adult. Okay, cool. Oh, oh no, this goes wherever the fuck it goes. Okay, sweet, sweet. Right. Yeah, pissing, sure. pissing in the middle of the street on the Lower East Side, a okay. Like you do, like you do. I'm trying to think if I've ever like let any bodily fluids go in the Lower East Side. No, I don't think I have. Lower East Side, no, me neither. I I have thrown up in a cab in Upper Midtown, but not Lower East. <laughs> Which is interesting because, yeah, that would be, you would think that would be the neighborhood where it would happen, but. Hmm. I just realized, like, in this moment, like, I've only had sex in an hour outer borough. Like, this is the, you've never had sex in Manhattan? I've never had sex in Manhattan. If it wasn't for my dog walking days, I don't think I would have either actually come to think of it. I had sex in Brooklyn. I haven't even had sex in Queens. I have had sex in every borough but the Bronx, I think. I had sex. On 14th Street and 2nd Avenue while I was dog sitting. Fancy. I know, right? It was it was actually my husband. I had just met him like three months before. Were you walking his dog? No. <laughs> it was just great timing on his part. No, I was walking a bulldog. Oh, rest in peace, Lulu. And she was not happy about me going into the bedroom and closing the door and fucking my husband. Wait, did you fuck your husband in someone else's house that you were dog walking for? I mean, Did I fuck them in their bed? Yes. Okay, I was about to say, we're past the statute of limitations. I don't oh, no, they wouldn't care. They know what I do now, and they're super cool and supportive of it, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're awesome. Hi, Alex. What's up? It doesn't mean that they necessarily want you fucking in their bed. Oh, no, they, well, I mean, I'm, I was there for two weeks. Yeah, sleep and fuck are two separate things. Well, what am I, they knew I was dating somebody. I'm just not going to fuck for two weeks. When, when you're newly dating someone, I don't think, I washed the sheets. Yeah, but did you stay in the comforter or the mattress? No. No. Why not? Good God, man. No, I'm very respectful. 
I mean, not intentionally. No, no, there was no jizz on any of their bottle, on any of their bedding. No. The do- when I walked out of the bedroom and we finished, though, Lulu had taken a giant shit in the living room floor and was just looking at me like, pick it up, bitch. I know you just got yours, but you've got to pick this shit up. Like, oh, you are not happy. Okay. All right. All right. No. <laughs> thought that was really funny. She just, she's like, I don't even need to. I'm just going to make this happen now because you locked me out of the bedroom. It was really funny. I mean, obviously the bulldog was a voyeur. Yeah, you know, she was just jealous that she, because she's not allowed, to, she wasn't allowed to go on the bed because she would revenge pee when they went out of town. Yeah. So I actually, I had to sleep on the couch. I didn't have to. They were like, you can sleep in the bed, just close the door. And I was like, oh, I feel bad. And she's going to be sitting outside the door all night crying. So I slept on the couch with her. This big old English bulldog snoring like a Mack truck on my chest. <laughs> but no, for fucking, we went in the bedroom and closed the door. Probably the civil, civilized thing. It is the civilized thing to do. Of all the, the dog walking clients, the people that I've had sex in their apartments, I think they're... Wait, how many of... How many? I did a lot of dog sitting. They would go away for like two weeks. They're rich people. And that, That's not a number, though. How many? Okay, I think... I think only two. And they're they're both really cool who know what I do now. So... It's a vibe. You know, there are certain apartments where I'd be like, no, we are absolutely not fucking here. I just, they might have like nanny cam set up or something. Well, that's why you fuck in the bathroom. Even then, there's just certain rich people where you're like, I'm not fucking with this. But no, the two that I did, they're super cool and they know what I do now and they, we keep in touch on Instagram. So it's all good. Do they know you fucked in their bed though? They probably assume. I, they assume. I they, mean, I don't assume anyone's going to fuck in my bed besides me. If I'm staying for two weeks and they know that, like, especially post-married and their dogs, like, love my husband and, like, oh, yeah, he comes and stays on the weekends. Of course. Come on. Come on. You're not stupid. It's my bed. No. I wash the sheets. He comes inside me. It's fine. Fluids. There are still fluids. (laughs) No. No, it would blast the AC so we weren't sweaty. It was fine. Put a towel down. I skeptical, am, skeptical. Oh, wow. You really, yeah, you really don't like the idea of someone else fucking in your bed, huh? Nope, not I so much. I could not care less. Maybe that's just because of what I do. I don't know. I could not care less. I'm like, as long as you wash the sheets, I don't give a shit. Fair, fair. I mean, the amount of hotels I've stayed in in exactly. my life. Exactly. You just see people are fucking in your bed, just not, you just, not when it's at your house, but it's the same, same thing. The sheets are washed, but people are fucking in hotels. You oh, know? 100%. And I have stayed in a lot of hotels in my life. Mm-hmm. So I I mean, there are definitely people that have unfortunately probably slept in my loads too. But. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I don't want to think about it. Me. Oh, geez. Sorry. Got you all in a tizzy. I know. <laughs> yeah, I guess if people, if you go away for a long time and you hire someone to stay with your pet and they're married, they're having sex in your bed. Thank God I have no pets. <laughs> <laughs> like like a weekend fine a long weekend fine but two weeks that's a long time to ask somebody not to fuck their significant other go fuck at home and come back why the fuck would I do that why would I go from like Queens to Central Park West and why would I do that when I have a perfectly lovely bed at Central Park West cause it's not your bed the dog's gonna get stressed out if I leave <laughs> take the dog to back to fucking Queens with you no that's even worse are you kidding no. Take the dog in like a lift or the subway. That's so much more stress. That's why I stayed overnight at their apartment is because it's less stress on the dog. They're in their own home. Nothing, cha- not, their routine doesn't change too much. Just weird new smells. I mean, that happens. What are you going to do? I don't know. Not fucking someone else's bed. It's, it's weird to me. It's weird. Uh, well, I guess you're just not as horned up as I am. I can't go that long. Oh, no. I, I'm sure I would do it in the moment. I'm just saying. Post nut clarity, I'd be like, man, I probably shouldn't have fucked in their bed. You know what it is? Maybe it's because, like, as a woman, I'm like, I already accidentally stained this sheet with period blood, so it couldn't get much worse. That's an awkward thing to have happen. In that situation, I'd be more worried about, like, staining the fucking mattress with period blood. No, you, like, you, yeah, you, I worried about it, but normally it would be, like, just if it came early, you go to sit up in the morning, you're like, oh, shit! And you have just enough time to, like, catch it before it goes through. So, like, bodily fluids, other than that, they'd never know it was there. 
They'd never know. Or like if you sweat or drool, you know, like what are you going to do? Like you, if you drool on somebody's pillowcase, it goes through to the pillow. It does. Oh, I know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird. This really upset you. A little bit, a little bit. Like, Sorry, but like I got to live my life while I'm working, man. I'm not here to uh, maybe shame you a little, but not. <laughs> Sorry. No, I mean, I'm obviously, getting mine. Obviously, I, I'm not going in a time machine and going back to cock block you in the past in other people's houses. I only fucked in the houses where I was like, they wouldn't care. Genuinely. It would never be like as a fuck you to somebody. Like I, I would not be comfortable fucking in someone's bed if they were like that kind of person where it was, or like, if you know, like I was saying, like you wouldn't even pee in their apartment. Like if I'm staying there for two weeks and I think you're chill, whatever. I'm taking good care of your dog. That's all that matters. Cool. I'm glad I'm just going to put out the vibe out there that like, don't fuck in my bed. Okay. You heard it here, folks. Unless you're fucking me, don't fuck in my bed. You can come fuck in my bed. I do not care. All right. So at the end of the episode, we're going to give us Sonya's address so you can go fuck in her bed. <laughs> I'm just saying. Fly to New York. Go to Broadway. Fuck in Sonya's bed. It'll be an amazing trip. Nice trip. Good. Round it out. Yeah. Really. I mean, you have to bring your own partner. You don't get to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, unless, um, unless you're tested and you pay well. Or you want to shoot content, you know. And t- still tested. Oh, always tested. Tested is like the unbreakable of all rules. Yes. Yes. As it should be. Agreed. And it's because it's not that hard. It's like, like, it's it's expensive. Yes. But, you, and you know, like, why fuck around? Because I am not a performer. I just go get tested at fucking county for free. They give right. Me a fucking printout. I also don't need a fucking 14 day test. Like, yeah. I don't have a regular partner. I'm not getting, I'm not fucking every 14 days. Right. Like, right. But yeah, like there, like there's a there's a fucking Quest Diagnostics lab like around the corner from my apartment where it's one hundred and eighty dollars, but it's a twenty four hour turnaround time, full panel, easy peasy. It's it's not asking much. It's like, oh yeah, if you get that, you can you can fuck me without a condom. Yes, maybe if you're a performer. Yeah, you have to have credits. Yeah, yeah. No, there's 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 rules. I mean, I'm a slut, but like. There's limits. You know, you got to be cool, first of all. If you're an asshole, I don't care how attractive you are physically. You're not getting anywhere near me. But. I mean, that should be a, like a rule in life in general. Yeah. No, but I mean, I get some people are like, oh, if I don't have to ever talk to them again afterwards, I'd f-. I'm like, I don't care if they're if I find like there, there's like guys who present themselves very differently. And then I do trade and I'm like, oh, I'm really sad you were inside me. <laughs> like, yeah, you're cute. But no, that was not worth it. It makes me sad when that happens. That is a giant bummer. It is. It's it's very upsetting when it's already happened and you're like, God damn it. There's nothing I can do about that. But I feel like that's a part of life. Just like, oh, regrettable partners happen. Exactly. You can't win them all. And some people are very good at faking who they are. It's, some people are very good at putting on an act. So. And sometimes I'm drunk and make poor mistakes. Oh, yeah. We all do. Yeah. Beer goggles are a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I've many times on this show told the story about like me sobering up inside someone and be like, why am I here? Oh, no. Like, as you were inside them? Uh-huh. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. It was at a wedding in Spain. Oh, no. Were you able to finish? Oh, yeah. I finished. Oh, okay. I'm like, I- I'm already pot committed. You're like, this is, we're already committed. This is, the deed yeah. is done. Yeah. And then she com- continued to illustrate out, like, how much of a shitty person she was, like, after the fact. I'm like. Oh, no. It was super not fun. Super not fun. And the best, the best worst part about it was. Speaking of having to have regular tests, turns out I had chlamydia at the time. Oh, no. Well. And I had no way to contact her, but I contacted the bride and groom who invited us to, she was a mutual friend. Oh, my God. Like, hey, do you have any way to let Cynthia know? It wasn't even that. I'm like, hey, can you tell her? Wow. Because she sucked that much. I'm like. You're like, I don't even care. (laughs) Like, I'm only letting her know. Just so the next dude who, like, gets falls in. Right. Like, I don't actually care about her. Oh, man. She was that bad. Oh, she was fucking horrible. That's she, unfortunate. I mean, this broad, the next day, because we're, we're in a villa in, like, Spain. Yeah, sounds amazing. It was a good time. I mean, the wedding was a good time. But she had offered to drive one of the bridesmaids back into town so she could catch her train back to Barcelona. And was still there in the morning, just pounding our fucking alcohol and she's like, a half hour before the show, like, I'm too drunk to drive. You'll have to figure out your own way in time. Like, what kind of person does that? Whoa. Yeah, she was horrible. That's, yeah. And my friend went to tell her the next time he saw her. And 
she opened the way this was told to me is she opened before he could say anything. I didn't fuck your friend in Spain. He's like, okay, but then I got nothing to tell you. Oh shit. Yikes. Like, wow. She sounds fun. Oh yeah. As I said, really regrettable. Yeah. My, but we've all, we've all been there. My buddy does credit me for saving his wedding. Cause apparently she was just being a horrible human being. And, and you got her out. Yeah. Okay. Well, see you then, then you, you, I, I did my job as a group. I did my job as a groomsman. Yes. I very drunkenly. That's great. You probably saved them some stress at their weddings. I did. And I thankfully, at the time it was regrettable, at the, but thankfully in hindsight, did not hook up with the bridesmaid I wanted to hook up with. Okay. But probably for the best. Well, yeah. I had fucking chlamydia. So yeah. Yeah. Super, that would have been bad. Yeah. She was super cool. We had yeah, a. Yeah. You wouldn't want her to remember you like that. Yeah. No. And we were still in contact. And like, she's, a, we had a lot of fun on the whole, like the whole Spanish trip. And it was like a wood. At one point, we both drunkenly disappeared after the wedding, and like everyone's like, "Oh, they're hooking up!" And like, no, she passed out at like some flowers outside. I passed, Aww. I passed out on a pool table for a little while, and then like came upstairs and then jumped on that grenade. Ah, uh, okay. So, in hindsight, I'm glad it worked out how it did. Indeed, indeed. So, you know, next time I roll into Cincinnati, Ohio, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Try that bridesmaid again. Like, what up, girl? I'm tested. Let's go. Yeah, like clean test this time. Aww. These things happen. It's true. It's it it is what it is. It's really it it's a numbers game. You know, it's knock on wood, I have not yet. I've been I've been good because I am very particular about about testing and and also like, you know, I'm married. I'm not gonna like I'm not hurting for dick content. You know what I mean? Like I basically live with a stunt cock, so I'm pretty select I am pretty selective. I do I sometimes give new guys a chance, but I, some guys are really good at presenting themselves differently. Then you meet them in person and you're like, oh, you're a fuck boy. God damn it. I'm right here. Jesus. Ouch. Ouch. You're, ah. you're not a fuck boy. Oh, I really am, but. Well, then you don't come off as one at least. But well, that's the plan. Uh... <laughs> oh, uh, self deprecating humor a little too. <laughs> Got a little too real. Got a little too real. Uh... <laughs> I think that's just part of. Life experiences, like, have some regrettable partners. Oh, for sure. You have not lived unless you've had some regrettable partners. For sure. My my first regrettable partner ever was after my first boyfriend. And I was a late bloomer. I didn't lose my virginity until I was 23. I know. Why? Because I am insecure. I was, I mean, I'm still insecure, but I was really insecure. Um, well, at least it wasn't religious indoctrination. No, it, I want. Oh, I was a horn. I was horny. I wanted to get laid. Like there was a reason. There's a, a reason I'm good at head. Like I was reading books and like taking notes and shit before I. So were you sucking a lot of dick before before 23? No, no. I think I had sucked two penises before I lost my virginity, and that was it. And it was my first boyfriend. Cause, and it wasn't like I was holding out for it, but it, you get to a certain age where you're at the point where you're like, okay, well, now I don't want it to be just anybody, you know? And so, yeah, it was my first boyfriend. And then we were together for two and a half years. And then the first guy I hooked up with after that, up until that point, I was like, okay, well, sex is kind of like pizza. Even when it's bad, it's good. No. The guy after that proved, was like, oh, no, sex can be bad, really bad. It was a chode. <laughs> It was like a two, it was like a, more like a tuna can. Like it was short and wide, which is, I, I don't mind length. I'm not a huge fan of girth. I'm very tight. So that was not fun. And he also, when he orgasmed, it was like, I actually, and I swear to God, I couldn't help myself in the moment after he came. I was like, are you okay? Because it was like, <laughs> like, I thought he was having a seizure. So it was it was not a hot time and I lived like 5 blocks from him but I was I wanted to get out of there so badly that I was like uh I have to work in the morning uh, no I can't stay no all my makeup's at home I no I I but you're 5 blocks away yeah I I really I don't sleep well if I'm not on my own but I got to get the fuck out of here Did he have such a good time that he tried to come back for re Oh yeah oh he wanted me to stay over and go for round 2 Oh yeah But uh, even after you bailed did he like Come sniffing around like. Oh yeah, uh huh, yeah. No, we went on I think like two more dates after that. Oh, you went on another date with him. I didn't want to. I bought him tickets to Avenue Q after that. I think I maybe already bought tickets before the fucking. That's what it was. 
And I could have just been like, oh, I'm taking someone else. You bought tickets? Yeah, I took him to see a show because I just felt bad. And I was this is the first time I'd ever had to do the breaking up with anyone we'd been dating for like two weeks, I guess. So shortly after the internet was for porn, you I know. broke his heart? No, it was it wasn't the night of Avenue Q. We went and saw a movie the date after that. And that the night on the way back home is when I ended it that night. But I fuck, I took him tickets to a show and I got him laid. Like meh. I've had worse outcomes. Exactly. I don't think I was that much of a bitch. You weren't being a bitch at all. Oh, my God. Your needs weren't being met, and you decided that you wanted to exercise some agency and you didn't want to be here? Oh, my God. You horrible, horrible human being. Oh, he tried to guilt trip me like, oh, you used me as a like a rebound. I'm like, no, I thought we, you know, like up until that, up until the sex, things were going well. We had a good time together. But I was like, there is no sexual chemistry whatsoever. And I'm sorry. That's a deal breaker. Well, and your response says, you're mad about that, bro? What are you going to do? He was, I'm sure, I'm, he was butthurt, I'm sure. I mean, nobody wants well, to be told that they're not good in bed, basically, but, you know. Yeah, but then you learn to improve. Uh, yeah, or, yeah, you get really good at other things if, you know, maybe you're not the most equipped for others. Then you get really good at head. I'm just saying, there's other right. things to but do. but if you don't know there's a problem, you won't course correct. Yeah, yeah. I hopefully he figured out that there was some kind of problem though, because the vibe definitely changed after that night. <laughs> hopefully, he's married now, so not my problem. Maybe she likes girth. Maybe, maybe she does. Maybe she likes being fisted. I don't know. Maybe she's had a couple kids, a little looser. Not my, not my cup of tea. Having kids? Oh no, my tubes are. <laughs> but just I meant just girth, not my cup of tea. Well, that I knew. I was. Yeah. No, my, t- my my tubes aren't just tied. They are out. Full on hysterectomy, huh? No, no, no. Just like a, it's called a bilateral salpingectomy, where they just take the fallopian tubes out and then they cauterize them. So they don't tie them. They take the tubes out. But it, no, I still have all the other stuff because otherwise I would be going through early menopause. Ah. Yeah. No, and they it's very rare that they will allow you to take all of that out without good medical reason, which fine, makes sense, but... Yeah. No, I'm no babies for me. Thank you. Did, did they let you keep your fallopian tubes? No, that would have been a fun souvenir. <laughs> I have them in a jar. No, 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 no. you got to put them in like the fucking like collector's cube. <laughs> like, just have them on like a, like a Futurama plate. Right. It would be a fun Halloween decoration. <laughs> exactly. It, it would definitely be something to talk about. Like when people it would come. It be in, an icebreaker for yeah. sure. It's like, well, the problem is most dudes wouldn't even recognize what it is. I mean, if they were just the tubes to be, I don't think most people would know. They'd be like, what are those, like snakes? It'd be weird looking. They're, they're, yeah, I saw pictures after and they, they don't look like much of anything. They're pretty small, you know. If, if they do fit inside if, you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're not a huge person. No, I know. But you were like, they just, they really do just look like they wouldn't look like. I wouldn't judge a dude for not knowing they were fallopian tubes. You know what I mean? You should. More dudes should know what fallopian tubes look like. They bring Outside life. Out of the body, I, I don't know. But in general, yes, un- learn female anatomy, sure. Yeah, more, more dudes should. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Mm. It's not, it's not, it's really not that hard. It's all the same, we all, we, but we have the same parts. It's just how they evolve. It's everybody starts out as, as, as lady bits. I mean, that's why we have nipples. Yeah. These are worthless on us. You know, the clit is basically a very, very, very tiny penis. Yep, until you take a lot of testosterone, and then it becomes even a, a bigger, smaller penis. I love big clits. I have an oral fixation, so the more I can put in my mouth, I'm like, that's when, that's why I like uncut dick, too. I'm like, it's just more to play with for me. It's more to play with in my mouth, please. When did you discover you liked uncut dick better? I mean, not it's again, it's not necessarily better. But th- that you enjoyed it. Um, Who was the first uncut dick I had? It's probably Tommy Pistol. Well, that's also attached to a very fun human being. He's a very fun human, yeah. So I was like, maybe it's just Tommy. And then, oh, you know, no, it was the guy I was supposed to fuck tonight. He had an uncut one, and it was a lot of fun. And it also just felt nice going in. Well, it self-lubricates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's not as much of a, like, a catch on the head so much. It's wild why that the catch on the head's there. yeah. It, it, it's it, with like a big bulbous head, it can be kind of painful, actually. And you know why evolutionary wise it's there, right? Why the foreskin is there? No, no, the, why the head's there. Like why it's ridged like that. No, 
It is to pull out other males' semen. Yep. Oh, that makes so much sense. So it's like while you're in there, if there's any left over, it's like I'm just gonna take yes. this on the way out. That's it is to pull out rival semen from you know. Evolution's crazy, isn't it? Right. That's crazy cool. That's wild. So technically, I guess then if we were down to going back to like primal, like a really big head could be a potential, like that's a huge advantage. Then yeah, evolutionary him. advantage. <laughs> that is hysterical. It's like, yeah, you can finish my girl. I'm going to pull it right out. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. No, yeah, you go first. It's fine. It's fine. I want to go last, actually. Yep. That's hilarious. I love learning. <laughs> We're an educational show. What can I, I say? I love it. That's fantastic. Well, actually, I learned recently, too, that there's an evolutionary thing about, like, you know, how women cycle, how women sync up when they're on their period. That's an evolution thing. Like, the fair, there's, like, the theory of, okay, everybody, you know, is fertile at once, so all the men can fuck all the women, so there's more of a likelihood that somebody will, in fact, get pregnant and carry on the seed. Or then there, I heard someone with a theory that, back in the caveman days, it's like, okay, well, everybody bleed at once so that way we can just be really super aware of predators in this time rather than, like, spacing it out for every week of the month someone would smell blood. I don't know about that one. I just thought it was kind of interesting. You know, you don't want saber-toothed cats, like, sniffing around your cave the whole month. It's true, but it's not like they're sharks. (laughs) No, but, I mean, like, animals do smell blood. They do, they do, and they definitely smell better than we do. Exactly. So that that's evolution's wild, pretty neat. It is. It, it's crazy to think that, like, in the grand scheme of things, that shit wasn't that long ago either. No, it wasn't at all. Not and in, in the lifespan of our planet, it, we are a blip on the radar. Yeah, the universe is huge, man. Yeah, it's a little terrifying, actually. It's kind of cool. Sometimes when I get, like, really depressed, I'll think about that. I'll be like, we are so fucking insignificant in the grand scheme of things. You know? There's probably intelligent life way somewhere out there. Watch, It's like a South Park where they're watching us as a reality show. Just like, man, those crazy humans. I wonder how much they're influencing things just to, like, spice up the later seasons. Oh, that would not. Yeah, if they were, like, somehow influencing how our own shit worked out. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's been a minute since a war. Let's have that guy invade. Yeah, that'd be good. Let's drop this little virus. It won't kill them, but... It'll make it interesting. Yeah, it won't kill all of them. (sighs) Yeah, the the whole... Are you you an alien believer? I mean, uh, statistically, it has to happen. Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm like. It's very arrogant for us to think that we are the only intelligent life in the universe, considering how massive it is. Humans are pretty fucking arrogant. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that is... Yeah. I mean... We have a planet of how many billion people are like, oh, my imaginary sky father is the only real sky father. Yeah. We're, we're pretty fucking arrogant. It's kind like, of what we do. I feel like we're the Alabama of the universe. Like, people don't even want to stop for gas here. Like, intelligent life is out there, and they know we exist. They're just like, oh, no, no, stay away from Earth. <laughs> don't even drive by there. Like, we're, we are such a fucking backwater. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're like, oh, roll up the windows, kids. No, 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 we're not, not stopping there. My only thing that makes me think that, like, Intelligent life isn't able to interact with us as much. as like, no one's come down to fuck us. Because mm-hmm. Lord knows if we were out in space. We'd be fucking fine. whatever planets. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They'd be like, oh, shit. Are there natural resources in fucking here? Welcome. This is ours now. Right. Yep. Are you an Eddie Izzard fan by any chance? I am. <laughs> Do you have a flag? <laughs> Going to different planets like, this flag, my planet now. It's the rules I've just made up. But yeah, you're right. Other in, other species are like, you yeah, know, we don't want to intermix with y'all. We're good. We're good. <laughs> well, I I read this a couple of years back, but like if aliens were able to interact with us, it would end up really, really poorly in most likelihood. It would probably end up much like the colonizers and the Native Americans were like, oh, y'all have natural resources for us to, us to exploit. And you're wildly unable to compete with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it would not end well for us, most likely. I just, I wonder if, like, we've done so much damage to our own planet that they're like, yeah, no, we're good. We're good. We're not gonna, we're not gonna, it's not even worth us trying to take over your planet at this point. Well, I'm not even saying takeover. It's just like, 
Minus for all the natural resources and then peace out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it would not end well. Because we still have some natural resources left. Do we? Yeah, yeah. Um, They're still building Teslas out of, you know, yeah. shit mined by fucking children. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> capitalism's dark sometimes. Wee! America, fuck you. Yeah. Best marketed country on the planet. Yes, yes. We have an excellent market. Well, no, and not even, you know what? Not anymore. Everybody hates us. Our marketing team dropped the ball a little bit. More, but For us. Yeah, no. We market well to, to our, ourselves. ourselves. Yeah. Well, and we still market well to other countries because our entertainment export is all, uh, the only thing we actually still make That's here. That's true. Well, yeah, our entertainment is, yeah. Yeah, okay. So there's we have that going for us. Yeah. What is America's exports? War and entertainment. Yay. Fucking and violence. But we're repressed about our fucking. <laughs> I know. I wish we were as offended by violence as we are by sex in this country. It would be a very different country. Uh, it's It's so crazy. backwards. If, it if people were equally offended by both, I could understand. You know, if you were equally as offended by violence as you are by, like, a nipple popping out of a boob on, you know. The, At the Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm like, that. if you were equally as offended, fine. But we're not. I'm like. Well, we can't be equally as offended because we need people to accept violence so they sign up for the military so they fucking continue mm. to fund that shit. Like, oh, hey, why do we not have universal health care? Because that's one of the benefits of joining the military. Mm. Why do we not have free college? One of the benefits of joining the military. Yep, it's incentivized. Yeah. Yeah. We got deep here, didn't we? Yeah, we should skate away from that. Yeah, we should. Let's move on. <laughs> away from so Away from the deep... Geopolitical topics. <laughs> so pussy eating? Uh, <laughs> Batman? Uh, Batman eating pussy? What do you think Bruce Wayne said? Do you think Bruce Wayne's a good I think, lay? I think Bruce Wayne is a bottom. I think Bruce Wayne is a subby bottom. I think it's like the one area of his life where he's like, I need to not be in control of things. And I bet Catwoman pegs him. Just like most billionaires. Yeah. Selena Kyle totally pegs Bruce. On a complete side note. Elon Musk self-owned himself on Twitter recently talking about that he didn't get laid. He hasn't gotten really? laid recently. So he apparently was at a party. This How much more do we have? I haven't I need another drink, by the way. Well, grab another drink. I mean I'm a lush. Can I just get up and get more yeah. seltzer? Yeah. Just help myself to your Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean we are getting closer to wrapping, but we can okay. continue like Yeah. It's always better to have more content than less, right? Yes. You can always edit out. Okay. But why would I do that? But you keep talking. I'm just going to go get a seltzer. Elon recently was accused of fucking one of the Google founders' ex-wives. Okay. Don't respond off mic. That I can't, uh, that I can't tolerate. That I cannot tolerate. I said, okay. Like, that's post-work I can't clean up. Oh. Okay. And someone asked him about it. He's like, no, he, he's a friend. I would never do that. Plus, I haven't had sex in a while. Like, how are you the richest man on the planet and then self-owning yourself on Twitter? Because you're also an asshole. What? Yeah, assholes get laid all the time. Yeah, it's true, but they it's usually because there's incentive for the partner too. Like Yeah. Paying. I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, yeah, how is he not able to pay for, for What? Elon's obviously weird about paying for things, seeing as he wouldn't even fund Grimes' album. It's just, it's, the simps for him are wild. It's weird. I'm like, why do you, stop simping for billionaires. They don't fucking care about you. They wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. Stop. Just stop. I know you want to be rich too, but just stop. Well, unfortunately, we're in America, the home of the impoverished millionaire. It's just wild. Like, the, the simps come out for him hardcore. I'm sure I'm going to have somebody in my Twitter and Insta DMs because I'm not licking his asshole. Excuse me, but... Well, obviously, no one's licking his asshole right now. Apparently. Yeah, yeah he has, like, yeah. 20 children. Really? I, I don't care. I really... Like, I don't know anything about him as personally. I just... I'm like, it's one of those things that, like, just shows up in my Twitter timeline. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, this is weird. I'll go down the rabbit hole. Right, why not? Why not? Let's deep dive. Why not? That's so wild. Yeah, no, apparently nobody's licking his asshole other than his simps on Twitter. Wah, wah. And I don't know, if I was a billionaire, I'd be much more careful about, like, how many people I knock up. Like, 
for real. Somebody's going to be, I mean, that's going to be a lot of child support. Right? Mm-hmm. If you're an NFL player, it's a pretty healthy judgment. If you're the world's richest man. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. This is why I'm not having children. Because I don't have much. So I'm not giving any of her away. <laughs> Speaking of deep diving and licking assholes, I did that the other day. I don't know. Did you see my Instagram? I did. I I miss. I obviously missed this one. I'm, I took a post uh, rim job picture. And just, my red lipstick was just all over my face. It looked like the, the Joker. If this is not what your face looks like after eating ass, did you even eat ass? I did see that, and I lies i knew you did i did see that and my brain went not other. for you well no, no it was i saw that one like, how did how did that happen with someone eating her ass oh <laughs> my brain just completely just like, you're like you can't fit no and i was doing the eating well yeah that makes a lot more sense i love rooming if my partner's into it i lo- I, i'm i get i get off on whatever gets my partner off and this particular partner was very into it so yeah i was all up in there it was a lot of fun Again, oral fixation. So if I can put my mouth on something, I, I will. <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. As long as everyone's having fun, there's zero wrong with mm-hmm. that shit. As long as everybody's a consenting adult, yes, damn right. Damn right. Just guys make different noises when you rim versus suck dick. It's a much more like primal, animalistic kind of groaning and reaction. It's really hot. Seeing as I've never had a guy's penis or their asshole in my mouth, I'll take your word for it. Do you do you like being rimmed? Have you ever had a rim job? I have not. But I also have digestive problems, so I tend to keep people away from my asshole. You're like, we're not even going to tempt fate. Yeah, like, no, 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 no. Like, like, let's just not do that. Possible this. risk is not worth the reward. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Especially if I'm hosting. I don't want to clean up. No, that's fair. That makes sense. Yeah, every time my fingers creep near my asshole, like my actual my butt cheeks just clench. You, nope. Oh, nope. that's fair. It's it's not for everybody. I personally don't like receiving myself because it just doesn't do anything for me. So then, like the risk associated with bacteria transfer from because I'm wildly prone to UTIs, which is super fun in my profession. Yeah, funsies. Yeah, super fun. I have found a system that works, but yeah, I'm just like, please don't go anywhere near my asshole because I am just convinced that it will never be clean enough and I'm going to get a UTI from you tonguing it. So for me, it doesn't like, it, it, there's no pleasure. And I'm so jealous of girls who like anal. Like, they, oh yeah, that's the only way I can come. I'm like, damn, really? Like if I liked it, there would be incentive, you know, to do it. But no. But then, the, God, once you start rimming guys, people just assume that you'll do that for anyone. And I'm like, uh... No, there's a limit. Like, there's a, okay, first of all, you're cool. So, and you're into it. And you literally just showered before we started rolling. You know, guys, like, they'll be, like, hanging out with you all day at a convention and then just hop in bed and be like, get the fuck in there and like, wash your ass. They're, like, presenting baby. Like, <laughs> yes. I'm like, you think that just because you've seen me rim in videos that that means that's always going to happen? No. Wash that shit. I never expect any partner I've been with that's a performer to act like they do on camera because that's work. It's, yeah, it's the disassociation or like new performers who are like maybe still kind of kids in the candy shop. Like guys can get like that when they're new. They can be a little thirsty and greedy and not realize that it's like, yeah, that was for content. And that person literally washed their ass out right before I did that. You, you've been wandering around a convention floor all day and you have sweaty man balls. And like, I don't know when you last took a shit. I'm not putting my tongue down there. I don't think that's being unreasonable. That seems very prudent. Very, very prudent. Especially considering I also always, I always, you know, give myself a little once over with fingers beforehand and warm water too. Like, I'm, it's just courteous, you know? It's just courteous. Not everyone's courteous. I'd like. oh, it's not that hard. It's really not. It's the, it's the little things that make a difference. It's true. It's, it's very true, but sadly, mm. a lot of people... And I've been guilty of this in the past of just, you know, just want theirs. Yeah. Maybe I'm trying to be better. I'm trying to be better. I, I'm just one of those people who gets off on my partner getting off, I guess. So I, I'm bad at, I, I'm like, no, let me give you yours first. So yeah, I tend to be slightly biased in that regard, I guess. I'm not as worried about getting mine. Sober me when I'm having, the rare times I have sober sex. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, no, 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 I want to make sure everyone's like, but there are very much been very 
very drunk hookups so are like I'm Oh yeah, yeah. When you're when you're in a different kind of altered state, for yeah. sure. I'm just like, oh no, no, I'm I'm effectively masturbating inside you. I'm right just now. gonna lay here. Oh no, no, I'm then I'm never finishing. Yeah. <laughs> really? Oh, so I, I have the kind of whis- whiskey dick where I will get up and have problems popping when I'm drunk, not okay. not problems performing. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And it's just like I would love to come. I, I just I really I, would. I really super duper would. But it's just not happening. Yeah, there there have been multiple times in my life where I very drunkenly have given up. Like oh, and fuck, like yeah, this is just not going to happen tonight, girl. Oh, that it, that that's life, man. Dicks are fickle sometimes. Yeah. And I've had a couple partners who, just like, one of them literally wouldn't leave until I sobered up enough for us to go again. And, like, I'm, and she, the minute I popped, she was, like, basically out the door. Oh, wow. She just, something in her ego is like, no, I can't leave this. Yeah. No, don't get me wrong. Like, there's, I can understand why there would be, like, an ego. Like, sober, my ego would be hurt. Drunk, I'd be like, all right, he's got whiskey dick. It happens. Yeah. Oh, man. It, one of my recent shoots, my partner had to, go uh get a little help and it was like for a studio shoot i get it and like part of me is like okay it was just really hot we were sweaty you know there was like he was setting up cameras but i'm just like was i not enough there you can't help it it's human nature you yeah know? for sure like you can't we all have those moments it's just about how you handle it in that moment like i try to never ever shame anyone for like having wood issues for whatever reason because it could be so many things it could be just the weather or you know what you ate that day you know or not being hydrated enough like or just being flat out exhausted it's yes yes like i am so into you but also so tired yes absolutely valid because it, it's very disheartening when it's just like oh we've been banging away forever and now now i can't finish mm-hmm. and now that i've stopped it's going down and ain't coming back up. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, but I'll, 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 eat, I'll eat your pussy for a minute here. Oh, that, that'll help. I buzz out. Yeah. That'll help. I'm, I'm real I sorry. Pro- I promise I'm super into you. I promise. Yeah. Yeah. It's just about how you handle it. Yeah. Yeah. You got you to gotta try and be kind for the most part, you know, because it's, it's, it's so awkward when, it's, when you're on set and a guy's having wood issues and the girl's just like making it. Thing of it i'm like that's not helping anybody like pointing it out yeah don't do that don't do that don't be like Ugh. like that's not helping anyone in this situation no it's so no. awkward oh my god as crew is just like i'm just gonna go to the other room go over to like crafty eat something not say shit yep just gonna wait for this to blow over yep yeah like, grab the dude of water if he needs it i'm always the person who's like do you can i help i'm like i have a mouth right here you know, I know some girl, some performers are like, I don't fluff off camera. I'm like, I am here to do whatever is going to make everyone's job easier. If it means sucking off off camera a little bit, if that's going to help you get hard again so we can finish this scene and everybody can go home, let's go. Right. We all get day rates. Exactly. My dollars per hour is going down longer than your dick is limp. Exactly. I'm like, if that's going to help you, or like, oh my God, when I first started one of my first studio shoots, I felt so bad because it was, you know, I got into porn right before this two-year anniversary, I was married to my husband. So this wasn't like something he signed up for. This wasn't something that we had discussed before. It just kind of happened. So the rules have evolved for our marriage. since. As they have to. Yes, you have to. People ask, there's no secret. We just communicate and we set boundaries and we check in. That's the secret to a happy marriage. Seriously. So my first studio shoot was a a boy-girl threesome. And it was a condom shoot. So for the blowjobs, we were fine. And then it was time for sex. And the condoms came out and the penises went boo. The one guy, it was super easy. He was like, he was so sheepish about it too, which was cute. He was like, can I lick your feet? I was like, baby, you do whatever you got to do, right? Let's go. You lick my feet if that's going to get you hard. But then the other guy was like, I was like, what can I do? Can I suck you off? Can I give you a hand job? Do you need to, like some guys, I'm like, do you need to eat me out? That's always amazing. He was like, can we make out? And I was like, ugh. (laughs) <laughs> well, that's way too intimate. I was like, that's gross. I, I felt so bad and my na- reaction was just like, oh, no, can you just lick my feet or something instead? <laughs> like, tongue my asshole, something. <laughs> exactly, I was like, I'll do whatever. Lick my armpits is better than that. Seriously, I was like, that's too intimate. It's too weird. Now I would be like, of course, but like in the beginning with my marriage, I was like, no, that's way too intimate. That would make my husband uncomfortable. I just felt so bad because it was, I thought that was really funny. People on the outside would be like, wait, licking feet was okay. 
but making out was like, yeah, no, that's gross. That's yeah, gross. I use my mouth much more than my feet. Yes. I'm like, it's it's more intimate. I can just check, I can check out while he's down there licking between my toes. I'm like, I'm just waiting for right. checking Instagram, like, yeah, like checking in with the fans. What's going on? Watch a little porn myself to get maybe wet if I need to. Yeah. No, it's, Take a quick picture of that, be like, for the fans. Content. Right. Yeah. Yep. No, making out is like it's it's intimate. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a different level. I mean, now I would be fine with it if I'm like that. That's what we gotta do to get the scene going. Fine, we can make out. That's fine. But yeah, in the moment it felt like, you know, can we cuddle? Like, ugh. Ugh. no. No, we're, we're we're here to fuck on film. Not- mm-hmm. It was cute though. It was really cute. Looking back, it'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. Now I would be able to. I just had to overcome that hurdle. Yeah, the rule like I said, the rules have changed, the rules have evolved. We check in regularly. Because for him, it's like people are like, oh, if he doesn't support you 100%. I'm like, it's not that. He supports me 100%. It's I just, doubt he'd still be in the marriage if he didn't. Exactly. But this is a, it's a marriage. It's a partnership. It's a making, you know, sacrifices and things. And for him, it's not a like, oh, I'm insecure or I'm comparing myself to, he's, he's bisexual. So as a bi boy, he's like, but babe, straight men suck. And I don't, and I'm like, well, you're not entirely wrong. No, sorry, but you're not. He's like, so he, his idea, of, he was like, just the idea of like a bunch of dude bros, like kind of passing you around. Like that's what grossed him out and freaked him out. So once he realized, like, it, what was happening was what was going on in his head. Was well, I mean, that's, all, that's always the case. It's way worse than what was actually happening. Yeah. So once we established that, he was like, oh, okay. You know. It's like, just meet a couple of the male talent. Most, most of them are not dude bros. No, most of them are, most of them are chill. Pretty chill. Well, as I've said multiple, multiple times on the show, this is the land of misfit toys. The oh. popular kids generally didn't get into porn. For real. For real. It's true. It's a bunch of like the black sheep, the nerds, the like a lot of us are really socially awkward. Like you go to a convention and most of us are really uncomfortable <laughs> and we're just trying to get through it. And people are like, really? It's like it's being on camera is very different. Well, um, being on camera is a safe environment. Yes, it's controlled. It's controlled chaos. Whereas you go to a convention, you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. What if somebody asks me a question I'm not prepared for? And, oh, my God, the weird expectations of these people who don't actually know me. Mm-hmm. Who think they know me because of parasocial relationships. And it's, yeah. 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 It's it's very, you know, porn is is full of, full of sort of just, yeah, like you said, the island misfit toys, the the rejects, the the black sheep, the the dorks. And I kind of, and that's kind of why I love it, honestly. It's a good group for the most part. Like any social group, there's... Exceptions, of there's, course. There's bad eggs. It happens. And a lot of guys, like, they tend to chill out once they've been around for a little bit. Some guys, when they first get in, they are very thirsty and a little overeager. And those can be kind of the dude broies. And then they'll settle in and kind of... Or they'll be gone. Or, exactly. They'll settle in and grow out of it or they'll be gone. Yeah, for the most part. So... Because at the end of the day... The dudes are the most replaceable thing in the equation. They d- they are, but, you know, I mean, like, do if you're good at your job, you will get work in this industry because you it, there's less of them to go around. Oh, for sure. You know, if, if you can if you can stay hard, if you can put in a good scene and you can pop on command, like, you can get regular work. 100%. It, but you're right. The audience isn't there for him. Right. Yeah. The minute you're problematic in any way, shape, or form— with a few notable exceptions, sadly. Uh huh. Yeah. If you make money, you'll be fine. Right. But if you're starting out and you're problematic, mm, yes, you, you will be fucking gone. You have very limited chances at the beginning. Yes, because it's, it's directors and they they don't have the patience for it. They're like, we'll find there's a, it's a revolving door. Still, yeah. like there aren't as many guys, but we'll find a replacement who can stay hard. Like, don't don't fuck around your first few times. But right, won't end up on a bunch of people's no list. Then. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. If you're if as long as you're like, if you're cool with female talent and like, especially nowadays, like if you do trade and you have a good reputation among performers, you'll probably get work, you know, but it's, it, it's not as easy as everybody thinks it is. You know, it's, it's one thing to like fuck your girlfriend with a phone set up on the dresser for OnlyFans. It's quite another to be on set. So right. it's not for everybody. As, as I've said multiple times, can you get it up and keep it up with me standing over you with a boom? Right over your and a camera guy yep. with a camera on your shoulder. It, it's it's not sweating a, on you. Oh my god, Be, we, y'all! We have to turn the ACs off when we film. No matter what time of year it is, no matter what the situation, the ACs have to go off because that will be heard in the background and audio. It gets 
disgustingly sweaty hot on porn sets. It's not as glamorous as it looks. There are very hot lights. And on like leather couches. <sighs> yeah, because we can't use fabric. That shit stands. Oh my God, it's so gross. It gets so slippery and sweaty and just everybody's hot and tired. It's re- it's not as glamorous as people think it is at all. If you're good, at f- if you're like making money on OnlyFans fucking your girlfriend, stick with it. Do not try and do porn. Do not try and do mainstream. Do not try and show up on set because you're just going to end up pissing people off and wasting people's time. And make less money in a lot of cases. Yeah. People think like, oh, if I get on set, then it'll be seen by more. No, not if you end up with a bad rep. Just, just, it's not worth it. Yeah. If you end up with a good rep, yes, having a major studio's marketing arm behind you, awesome. But it's a, it's a risky bet. Yeah. It is a gamble. It's a big gamble. And you have to have some self-awareness, which, you know. Most most people, not just men, people in their early 20s don't. You can't be told at that age that you don't know shit. Oh, I thought I knew we fucking all, everything. We thought we knew everything. I swear to God, if you're listening, you don't. And you'll you'll get to your mid to late 30s and be like, oh, they were right. But it is what it is. It's one of those things. It is what it is. It is indeed. But it is about that time, actually. Mm. Is that, are we done? We're going to call last call on this motherfucker. I hope this was entertaining for your guests. I feel like I'm probably a different kind of guest than you're used to having. I don't know. I feel like I, I don't. So look at you being self-conscious again. Mm-hmm. That's what I do. I'm a product of Catholic guilt. I'm like, was I entertaining enough? I think it'll be fine. Okay. I think it'll just be fine. Okay. We, we just covered quite a variety of things. That is often what happens on this show. Interesting. Like I said, I haven't watched like a full episode start to finish, so. You're just like, Matt's highlights. Yeah, because I'm, well, you know, like when you, when we reached out, I was like, I'm out here already. I'm, I'm busy. I think I can't sit and watch a whole episode, but I'm like, I got a vibe. I feel like, yeah, I can sign on, sign on to this. I'm cool. Like, I didn't ask you how you got in the industry or your favorite position, so. Yeah, oh my God. Yeah, because I don't do that. Oh, okay. Never. Uh- because I think that's bullshit. Well, because everyone else asks that. It's not that you could Google it and find out. I've been asked that 10,000 times. Yeah, it, yeah. It's a point of pride. Touche. I didn't. That's bravo. Yeah. It's like, you know what it is? It's like, I'm going to bring it full circle. It's like the new Batman not telling his origin story. <gasps> <gasps> we don't need it. Exactly. Yeah, the only time virginity stories comes up is like natural conversation. Like, right. Uh, like, yeah, me being a late bloomer. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Bravo, bravo. But now that we've uh, got meta on how this show works, so anyway, where, where can they find you other things? Uh, Twitter is where I'm most active. So that's at Sonia Harcourt XX because it was one character length too long for the triple X apparently. And it's Sonia with an I, S-O-N-I-A, Harcourt H A R C O U R T, not hardcore. That would be, so many people think that's what it is. I'm like, that would be really, that'd be ballsy. Yeah, that is a ballsy name. That like. would be a very ballsy name. That'd be a lot to live up to. No, it's uh, it's an amalgamation of two of my favorite theater roles Sonia Harcourt, Instagram, Sonia Harcourt, Sonia Harcourt triple X.com, uh, OnlyFans.com slash Sonia Harcourt triple X. But yeah, everything filters through Twitter. So. Hell Thank yeah. Thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure. This was fun. Good. That's the important part. Hell yeah. And as always, you can find me at Matt underscore Slayer on Twitter, Matt Slayer on Instagram, Matt F and Slayer on Facebook, twitch.tv slash Matt F and Slayer, the Patreon where the bonus content and all the other shenanigans happen at patreon.com slash Matt Slayer. You can find the podcast and now we drink on Twitter and now we drink underscore on Instagram. And until next week, drink up, motherfuckers. Nice. Cheers to that. <laughs>